Okay, hello, this is Jason Robinson from Illustration by Design. I apologize for the extreme lateness of this stream. It was supposed to start probably about 15 minutes ago, but right before it started, I got a phone call and uh, that I had to take, so that tied me up, and then everything got thrown into, uh, into chaos. So let me turn the volume down on my tablet. So I'm not getting an echo out of that. Um, but hope you guys are doing well. Hope uh, you guys had a great weekend. And everything is going hunky-dory for you. Hope none of you are that sick. I know a no number of people have are, are been getting sick the last few weeks. But I uh, hope you guys are feeling well. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to live stream the last several days because I've had other jobs to work on. Um, and I'm going to be tied up probably for a week starting Thursday. Um, and I won't be able to live stream probably for a week after that. So I figured I better start just inking because Nostra needs these pages in about a month and uh, to post on onto the Indiegogo when we launch. So I'm gonna start inking with uh, this page right here, page one. And uh, we'll just start going with it um trying to think what else probably a bunch of other things i'm forgetting but as uh as time goes on you know i'm, I'm i might remember it so <laughs> feel free to feel free to ask me any questions if you have them um some people might show up and come in i'm not sure we shall see um I might already be here oh yeah one person's already here so let me get him in and uh we will get started oh, hey. hello hey can you hear me yeah how you doing good seeing good, you you're tough. Good doing pretty you well too. it's uh hold on it's just been kind of busy the last uh last several days so I'm yeah i was a lot. i was hearing you say yeah i know what you mean yeah so it's been kind of nuts but um yeah you have uh your indiegogo you've extended it for uh yeah for the canadian shield yes i did cool 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 so um what what uh where are you at right now with it uh we are at one thousand forty five dollars oh fantastic very good so you're, so you're more than halfway there yeah, and less than halfway to go, and less than, less than, well, if you do the whole 60 days, less than half uh -huh. of that to go to. Uh -huh. so, um, so, so you have about 30 more days left with the campaign? No, no, uh, no, uh, 27, 27. Oh, 27? Okay, okay, cool, cool. Um, hold on one second. Let me put the link in the, in the chat. Uh, Eric Hawkins is here. He says, how dare you think you can work on other stuff and not entertain us? Just who do you think you are? Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I apologize, Eric. I'll, I'll try to do better in the future. <laughs> um, I have to run back and forth between my computer and my drawing table. So I apologize if it's hard to hear me. Um, uh, 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 uh. Oh, I can hear you just fine. Okay. Hold on. Um, Oh, up in the wrong place. Canadian Shield. There it is. Yeah, if you actually type in Canadian Shield, it's the first one to pop up. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, right now, um, uh -huh. the next uh, seven buster, Dillard, as you know, is. Doing, John Dillard's doing an ash can for uh, the Buckler, and uh, uh -huh. next uh, seven people to back. He's got a page that's got nine panels on it. The next seven, uh -huh. two of them were all up. 
he's going to cut it up into like sketch cards, you know. Uh -huh. uh, so right. two, two of them are already gone. So the next seven backers will get one of those quote unquote sketch cards. The, but they're not mm -hmm. sketch cards, they're actual piece of art, art from the the thing itself the buckler ash can and they're okay. like three inches by five, five inches so mm -hmm. plus the next the next backer to do the 300 dollar tier he's got a double page spread that he's been working on from buckler it's right. gonna get that okay Very and cool. that tier that tier and that tier is uh both books plus the figurine for the 300 dollar tier mm. So are um are the buckler and the Canadian Shield actually gonna meet up in this book at some point? Uh in John's Buckler book, yeah, yes, they are. Okay, cool. But uh in the cross actual cross comics universe, they probably won't meet up for six years, five, six years. Five or six years. Yeah. Um I'm <laughs> because his buckler his buckler is not quite the same as my buckler. <laughs> he created the buckler to be a non mechanical sidekick. To, to be trying to make it a mechanical part of the canon mechan of cross comic unit. Uh, um, can you repeat that one more time? I I think I missed something. He he created it to be a mechanical sidekick. No, no, not mechanical. Canical, like you know. Canon. Oh, okay. Gotcha. 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 Okay. Okay. He tried to create it to be part of the canon of the cross comics universe. Oh, okay, okay. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't too uh, <laughs> on the idea, shall we okay. say? Uh, but you know, I've ended up creating my own Buckler uh, okay. version. So neither of ours are psychics. His ends up becoming a villain. Oh wow! Okay. So, so um, but you said that eventually they, they are going to meet. Yeah, as well in his well, definitely in his book. That's part of the bash can, you know, uh -huh. that, and that's actually part of the that's the double page spread. Him first, sort of him first meeting him. The oh. Canadian Shield comes crashing down, well, jumping down, crashing down, flying down. I'm not, uh -huh. not sure how you want to say it. In between him and um, uh, somebody he's trying to stop from hurting somebody else. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, that is cool. So how long how long have you been working on the Canadian Shield, the character? Um, approximately thirty years. Thirty years, you know. Are you all, yeah. are you around only thirty years old? <laughs> I thought you. Were. No, I'm forty six. Oh wow! Okay. Or forty seven. So it might it might be long. Well, thirty years might be about right. Oh, wow. My mom got my mom got me some Christian Christian Archies, and eventually got into oh reading. yeah, Spire. I had those comics. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah. Those comics with uh, what's his name? Al um Al Hart Al Hart Hartley. Hart Hartley. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great artist. <clears throat> yeah, so you know I got those, and then you know got me into reading regular Archie, and then mm -hmm. eventually at the death of Superman, I got into reading you know DC and Marvel type stuff. Right. You know, yeah. and I noticed there was no Christian superhero books out there. You know, there was the Archies, of course. Right. But everything else was Bible stories rehashed or real kitty stuff. Right. Or you know maybe angels and demons at best, and, but there was. They, and there was especially Hansi. what, what they, was that? They had Hansi, the girl who loved the swastika. <laughs> that was that was a Christian <laughs> comic. <laughs> it was also put up. Okay, I, I, I didn't hear about that one. Yeah, that, that, that one. I've got a whole bunch of. That that. And of was, course, there was. Uh, uh huh. Go ahead. I was going to say, of course, there's uh, the the Crusader series, as I call it. Oh right, yes, yeah, uh, yes. Was that by Archie as well? I had a book. No, that wasn't by Archie. That was by uh, a different company. Okay. Uh, I, forget, I forget the company. But, oh, yeah. Actually, I have one right nearby. Hold on. <laughs> uh, But 
but this was all supposed to be based on somewhat sure but chick publications uh, oh chick okay <laughs> the chick tracks yeah cool but you know there was all that but there wasn't anything ongoing monthly for christian comics right. and especially not superheroes so i decided to make my own mm -hmm. superheroes now the canadian shield was not among the first of uh. the few <laughs> <laughs> I've got I've got a couple lists of my original ones around, and it's like, cool. Oh God! Are you, playing, are you planning on on uh, bringing them into that universe? Or I might at I might at some point, you know. Cool. That's great. Now, now, um, how many? How many? I I'm, since you said it's a universe, I'm assuming this is the first book of of a number of them. You're going to do more than just one book eventually. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have I have eight scripts written for him at the moment, mm -hmm. um, and then, like I said, I plan to I I know what's I know the characters that he's gonna face up to mm -hmm. issue nineteen, and you know I have another I have seven other, six other characters besides him that I want to bring out at about the same time, one month after each other. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one's going to be Snowdrift, then the Flame, Insecto, Ozona, the Wiz, Electite. Mm -hmm. And when Electite has 12 issues in the issue after her, so issue 19 of the Canadian Shield, mm -hmm. the, they're going to end up, there's going to be a story arc where they end up forming a superhero team. Cool. Cool. Called the Holy now, Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> good. Very good. Now, um, is the Canadian Shield. Um, is he going to fight um, mainly earthly threats or um, like demon spiritual threats or both? Is it going to be a mixture? Uh, what's his, it's probably, what's going to be a, probably going to be a mixture, but mm -hmm. I would say more, more along the lines of physical threats. You know, mm -hmm. you know, I know, it, I know. The scripture says, says we battle not against flesh and blood, mm -hmm. blah blah blah. But you know, you know, you you know somebody's fighting threat. Right. Threatening, threat somebody threatening the safety. You know, you got to take them down, right? Right, exactly. In the second issue, I got this guy named Toxico. He wants to, you know, hold a uh, nuclear power plant hostage. You know, otherwise he's gonna blow uh -huh. it up or whatever. You know. Right. Yeah. And yeah. he's just doing it to get money. So he's not. Mm -hmm. he, it's not that he cares about the environment so much. Right. Know? He's once. But to get he rid. loves it. Yeah. Yeah, but he looks very toxic looking himself. So, mm -hmm. yeah, Eric Hawkins points out that uh, Nightcrawler used to be a religious character. I think he still is, unless unless they yeah. completely changed his character. Um, and also, there have been other ones like Daredevil. Um, you know, yeah. he, he's a very strong Catholic. Um, yeah. But I, I get your point in terms of there hasn't been any comic books that are really focused on Christianity. Um, yeah, there there really hasn't been. There have been yeah. characters who have been religious, but you know. But and even that said, you know, I don't want to make these like you know they're pushing it down anybody's throat. You know, right. you know, I want to make it fun so you know the average Joe can read it without. And mm -hmm. I hope that's what it is. You know, mm -hmm. you know, I'm looking at it from my perspective, and I think we can read it. You know, without getting you know. Feeling it's being pushed down, so I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure there's some that will feel just with the little bit that there is in it that it is pretty cheap, right? You know, but mm -hmm. you know, you know, if they, any... wanna, if they don't want to buy it, fine. You know, I'm not gonna jump right. down the throat. Right. You know? Yeah. And it can't be any more preachy than the current slate of uh, Marvel comics. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so very cool. That's awesome. Um, is who who's is he going to have like an, an arch enemy or? Uh, Eventually, or I'll build up his rogues gallery. Um, uh -huh. In the first year and a half, first year and a half, a couple characters might end up as his rogue part of his rogues gallery. Eventually, uh -huh. yeah. But probably most of the ones that appear in the first year and a half won't because he's just uh, he's he's not in a city on his own. He's uh -huh. mobile, so. He's just going to end up coming across these, you know, villains, you know, mm -hmm. in the first year and a half, you know, these bad guys, you know, 
they're not set in any one city either, you know, yet mm -hmm. the bad guys, you know. Yeah. But uh, I think the third issue has a character called Absorb. I think eventually he's going to become one of the Canadian Shields rogues, if you okay. will. Mm -hmm. You know, like, and, uh, it's hard to pin down some characters that will or will not, depending, you know. Right. Yeah. You know, especially, you know, the first year and a half, you're trying to, well, for me, I'm trying to introduce a fair amount of characters, you know, villains. You don't want to be too repetitive. Right. I think it, otherwise people will just get bored. Mm -hmm. Right. But you want to establish sort of the, uh, I guess, in a sense, ground rules, you know, establish the characters, you know, who, what they're about and everything before you start diving into that stuff. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Now, can you just for anyone who who might watch this later on or is listening now, can you just sort of give a a, a rough um, layout of who the Canadian Shield is, his origins, sure. what, what he does? Uh, he is a Native American from approximately the early 1800s. He was born, you know, around the year 1800. So, and probably around. Somewhere between 1820, 1825, he he goes into a church after becoming a Christian, and he mm -hmm. basically says, God, I want to do your will, and mm -hmm. God transports them to our present day. Okay. And so, so he's a man out of time. Yeah. And okay. puts him up in the – now, he lived in my Hamilton area when back in you know his day, but mm -hmm. God transports him – up into the middle of nowhere because you know don't want to transport them downtown hamilton today right mm -hmm. <laughs> it'd just be freak out i think right um and then god takes the suit the suit that he wears uh from the future and that it gives him incredible abilities to fly you know be able to withstand heat, extreme heat cold bullets all that making him into a virtual superman mm -hmm. And that's that suits in you know like fifty years in the future or something like that in some secret government lo Canadian government laboratory that nobody knows about, very few know about. And mm -hmm. God takes that suit from the future and brings it to our present, where the Canadian Shield is. An angel appears, tells Cana uh man like Cougar is what his name is, at that time tells him to put oh. on the suit and travel south. And then travel he south. learns, yeah. Okay. Because he's he's way up north in Ontario here. Mm -hmm. So eventually he'll get back to Hamilton after like about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, but so, you know, he encounters things along the way and he finds out that suit gives him incredible abilities, you know. Mm -hmm. Like one of the first things he does, you know, he just feels so aware, so strong, you know, it's like almost an adrenaline rush or something. I'm not sure how to put it. He just uh -huh. walks up, walks over to this huge tree, right. uproots it, and <laughs> you're talking it, you're talking in the middle of winter, uproots it and throws it up into space. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh man. Cool. Very good. Um actually I, I, let me let, let Nasser body in. He's uh waiting in the wings. So and he seems to be kind of chomping at the bits to get in. Hold on. Is Nasser here? Maybe. Uh, Hello, serious. Nasser. Hello. <laughs> How's it going? Nasser, you know Rick, right? Good. Uh, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Rick Piper, Nasser Abadi. Nasser yeah. Abadi, John. Rick Piper. <laughs> How's it going? Good. John was on his stream the other day talking about the Canadian Shield and the Buckler. Oh, oh, he, he was on uh, Nasser's channel. Yeah. Yeah, I, oh, sent, cool. I sent you the link, Jason, but you, you don't like us enough to come by. Yeah, sorry, I was uh, I was preoccupied with other other work. I apologize. How dare you? <laughs> I'm sorry, Nasser. <laughs> this other this other um, job actually pays me, so I, I, I had to I had to work on your stuff first. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> but right, um, Nasser. 
Mm. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> as far as uh, as far as the Canadian Shield, uh, everybody that's uh, watching, it looks like there's uh, five people in here. Uh, although I think one of them's me because I have the chat open. Uh, <laughs> I think one's me too. So <laughs> and one's me. Hey, cool. <laughs> we filled the whole chat. Didi's here, so that's another person. That's awesome. Yeah, Humphrey Bear's here too. Oh, cool. Very good. Yeah. So, um, Rick, um, this is going to be a full color comic. Yes, it is. Uh, the buckler ash, uh, twenty-four. The buckler ash can will be black and white though. Okay, got it. And but, and the the ash can is going to be separate from from your book, right? Yes. Sir, Sorry, yes. guys, my internet died on me, so it it, uh, <laughs> it it wasn't working for a second, so I couldn't hear you guys. That, that, that's okay. We we didn't notice. Um, but. <laughs> I'm sorry, Nostra. I can't. I can't stop teasing Nostra. I feel bad. Um, but um, okay, so uh, Buckler is black and white. It's a separate book, separate ash can from Canadian Shield, which is in color. Yes. Okay, got it. So, very cool. And uh, when when do you plan on um, on uh, shipping it? Oh uh, well, as soon as I can, obviously. Uh, I put. Is a, it finished? Uh, uh, it's all drawn up, yeah. Okay, uh, good. It's in the middle being colored by Pope Raven. Oh, fantastic. Okay. So it's it's seventy five percent or more done. Who who's yeah. lettering it? Um, either me or Pope Raven. Pope okay. Raven wants to take a uh go at it, so uh -huh. I gave him the script, so he's gonna, you know, do a couple pages of that, you know, uh -huh. and get those back to me. See how okay, he good. does. I can't see it being bad, you know. Uh, I I don't mean this as dig at letters, but how hard could lettering be? Um, it can be hard if you don't know what you're doing. Um, you know, I I've seen some pretty bad lettering. So yeah. even, even even today with computers and everything, it 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 should be fairly simple. But it, it's it, what's hard isn't so much just putting the letters down. It's putting them down in a way that makes the um. The book readable, yeah. Knowing knowing how 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 large to make letters, how to place them in, in in a way to make the 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 uh make make the readability flow for the people who are who read who reading the comic, it's it's just a lot of a lot of subtleties that make you know lettering either good or bad. So if you're not familiar with them, it I've, seen, it. I've seen bad lettering grew in the comic before. Yeah, uh, I have done it once. I, like I did a version of the book before this. I uh -huh. I went and remastered it just yeah. in September, and mm -hmm. I had the other one up on my thing on my website for like five years for people to sell. I got like three sales. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I, I actually was just reading a book where uh, there was there was a two page splash page and <laughs> the. Uh, the character starts saying a sentence, which is on the next page is a pun. But when they, after they say like they're half the sentence, right mm -hmm. below them is the bubble that says like something like previously or a long time ago. And then once you read, you read their half sentence, you read the long time ago part, and then you go to the next page and the first panel has the pun. You completely do not understand it because you were just taken out of it reading the previously uh, bubble. And so that, right. that was like an awful example yeah. of, of lettering. I had to, I, I felt I missed something. So I had to go back to this uh, two page uh, spread and reread it. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay. They sort of take you out of there because where they kind of stupidly placed that uh, bubble. So mm -hmm. I, I've seen it um, a few times yeah. actually uh, <laughs> make, yeah. make a comic awful or, or, or uh, in instances where like they, sort of place the bubble so that way when you read it it's like you sort of missed something and then you're like oh mm -hmm. wait you have to read it this way that's like completely the wrong way for it to make sense right yeah, yeah. but is that bad lettering or bad writing that's so bad, bad lettering bad <laughs> lettering it's, well, it's, it's, it's where they're putting it's where they're putting the bubbles it's it, what they're it's saying a, isn't bad but where it's placed is bad no no what i mean by that is shouldn't um that just having that previously thing in there, you know, with the uh, the bubble with the rest of the pod, 
you know, shouldn't have that just the rest of the pun just been in the panel before? Or, um, or well, that? it was like sort of like an, an action scene where they were like about to uh, fight some monster, and then the, the next page, it's like you know they throw a punch and they finish the pun. It uh, it's just that the word the, the whole previously bubble whatever it said should have just been like uh, on the top left of the spread instead of being on the bottom right. It's just placement. Uh, uh. So I guess I'd have to see it to know completely what you mean. So, yeah, but um, but yeah, well, like Nash was saying, placement is a, is a big thing that that can um make lettering either good oh, yeah. or poor. So yeah. uh, and uh, you know, Eric Hawkins points out, you know, lettering is harder than you think because, it, like I said, it it seems like it should be something that's pretty straightforward, but um. I mean, I, I I found just just by tr trying each one of these things, you know, inking, coloring, and lettering, that they're all a lot harder than you would initially think until until you actually start diving into it and doing it yourself. It's like, oh man, this is kind of <laughs> there's a lot more to it than than I thought there'd be. Right, um, you need a half decent uh, font, and then sometimes you know, depending on the comic, like I've seen uh, sometimes reading Justice League where they'll have different. Um, sort of boxes and and different uh colors for different characters whenever they have a, a thought bubble or something so it um you know it's it's all a matter of like it's a you have to be really good with designing because it's yeah. not just you know putting letters a lot of it's design and a lot of letters also design uh the um like the credits page and all that so a lot of it uh is design you have to find good fonts and designs and you know if it's in color ours isn't but if it's in color you know you have to find good colors that match the art and um yeah it's uh it, it could be very tricky that's why i don't do it <laughs> <laughs> that, that's why he's forcing me to do it uh thanks <laughs> Nasser. um uh tank fair art says sexy rick hmm, appears you have a you have a not so secret admirer in the chat um <laughs> Tank, uh, Tank Ferret adds, uh, lettering has to assist the eye flow of the artwork, complement the pacing, and communicate the emotional context of the script just to start. Yes. Yeah. Tank Ferret art is correct. So that's very cool. So, uh, man, well, I'm glad you're, you're you're so far ahead with the book. So, I mean, yeah. you're a lot further ahead than, than I am. So that is, that is definitely uh, a plus. I'm just starting uh, to ink the book. Yeah, I had pages. decided. I'm not handling the book, but I'm I'm getting there. <laughs> well, I had decided before I even started the campaign, I wanted to be done, letter, mm -hmm. or not, uh, you know, done the book, you know. Right. Yeah, you know, at least the you know the penciling and inking. Mm -hmm. You know, I would have liked to have been done the coloring. You know, uh -huh. I would I actually would like the coloring to be done right now. Pope Raven's going a bit slow for me. <laughs> <laughs> A bit slow with well, the coloring. He's, yeah, he's been on it for what a month and a half now. Well, coloring is very hard. I mean, I. Well, I'm not. I'm not saying it's not. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's just uh, I want it a lot. Yeah, I, you want you want you want it. I understand. Um, but I find coloring the hardest part of of illustrating for me. Um, right. That, that's why he wouldn't color the cover. That's, that's why, why we have a stretch goal for it. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. I, I'm not. I'm not lying. It's. It's. I. It takes me twice as long to to color. I can. I can pencil page in a day. It takes me two days to to color a page, because oh, it's yeah. it, it's so we're, much of a headache for me. We're gonna have um, him actually paint the cover if if it uh, gets high enough. Gosh. <laughs> so so make sure you tell all your friends, your grandmas, have your have your grandmas, your aunts, your parents, everybody. Tell them all to buy twenty copies. Um, yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's, and, it's going to be a great investment. Yeah, and and, and if we get to three thousand dollars, Nostra will shave his head. That's official. So yeah, that's so why I haven't gotten a haircut. Huh? <laughs> so that's why I haven't gotten a haircut lately. Okay, good, good, because we're going to shave it all off once once we get to three thousand. So yeah, everyone encourage your 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 grandmother, your mailman, um, you know, the kid who beat you up in in high school. Encourage all those people. Give, give them all a call, and uh, you know, call your butcher. You know, you're uh, you know, the baker, the candlestick maker, right? And, and uh, have them <laughs> have them all buy 200 copies of Secret Comics Presents so we can see Nostra Bald. That's the main <laughs> reason why I'm doing this book. I, want, I just want to see Nostra Bald. Right. 
Right. You spam know? it. Spam the book. Spam the link. Uh, once we launch next month on the thirteenth, uh, spam yeah. it to uh, to uh, everyone you know. Really, um, all over yeah. Twitter, YouTube, uh, yeah. Instagram, make, Facebook, even LinkedIn. Make sure uh, to send it every every member of war of uh, war campaign because I'm sure they all want to see Nostra bald, like I do. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I want to get is I want to get that Mountie uh, Canadian shield that you did so I can color it on my show one day. Uh, I'm sorry? Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, dang it. I just finished that. Oh, shoot. <laughs> you just reminded me. I have it right here next to me. It's on, it's on, it's on my to-do list. This is a drawing of the Canadian shield I did um, for uh, – it was uh, – uh, oh, my, right, my brain is just dead. Um, you fan edition. Or thank you. Thank uh, you. I, I can think I'll, of a I'll, outbid, I'll outbid Rick right now for it. Okay. Um, <laughs> How much are you um, giving him? Fifty? I'll give you sixty. <laughs> no, no I, I just, 60. I just want him to send me uh, a digital pic so I can. Uh... Shh! Don't tell him. Don't tell him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was going to give me six hundred dollars for it, Nasser. So you're going to beat that? <laughs> give me six fifty. It's yours. No, um, I can't look cheap. I got to beat it. You got to beat it. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, I got I have to finish that so I can send it to uh, to uh, Rick. And so I can put it up on my fan art page. Anybody yeah. who gives me any fan art for my stuff, uh, I have a fan art page on my website. So. Oh, cool. All that stuff. What's your website on, address? Uh, www.crosscomics.ca. Dot C N. C A. C A. Okay. Eric Hawkins is asking about a pre-launch page. No, we're not going to do a pre-launch page. Uh, I don't see much of a point because my mailing list has uh, most of the backers from uh, Stardust and Trixie outside of the people that backers. that you did uh, outside outside of the people that uh, unsubbed it. I already have them on my on my mailing list, and if anyone wants to sign up for my mailing list, I mean, if you just go to my YouTube, it's in the description of every uh, video. But uh, people could just sign up for my regular mailing list. What's your YouTube channel, Nasser? Well, they, everyone here I know for a fact is already everyone that's that with Nasser. People are going to be listening to this twenty years from now. They need to know your your YouTube um, well, channel. They, they could see me there in the chat. There. Oh gosh, Nasser, you're a terrible salesman. <laughs> Always that's be closing, Nasser. Always be closing. We are closing. We're closing right now. No. We're closing the stream. Terrible. <laughs> No, but uh, yeah. If you want to sign up for my regular uh, uh, mailing list, uh, the link to that's over on my channel. But I don't think we need uh to set up the pre-launch. We well, should just in case. Kick Nasser. Anybody new, you know, especially on Indiegogo, if they see it. Okay, so Nasser's back. Maybe maybe you can offer something, you know, for anybody that's signing up, they they get something too, like um. What's his name? Manny from Good Dog. He offered people a sketch, a special sketch card for people signed up beforehand. If they bought something, you know. Hmm. I didn't. I, mean, I get, I get what you mean, but uh, I, I don't think we need a pre-launch. Uh, Sorry, I. I've been in uh, Cross Comics uh, website address into the chat. It's uh, crosscomics.ca, you said? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a site that I've had for like five years, too. <laughs> DD says she'll be backing you and NASA. Thank you, DD. Thank you, DD. DD is one of our uh, biggest supporters, and she's awesome. Fantastic artist. I have some of her prints around here. Let me see where I put them. Uh, let me see. I think they're here next to me. Yeah, they're right here. Uh, let me get them out because I have them in this uh, plastic thing here. Mm -hmm. She sent so me not, some really awesome prints. So, Nasser, have you seen uh, the the Netflix Dracula? No. You, you said you haven't. Okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, hold up. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put my camera real quick so we can see these awesome uh prints here that I have from Dee Dee. Here's yes. uh here's the fly. Let's see, let's see. Ooh. Cool. Hold on. Oh wow, Dee's scary. Are you gonna have Dee Dee uh, do one of your comics? What was that? Are you gonna have Dee Dee do one of your comics? Uh I don't know. Uh or for the next issue. Hmm. I didn't think she, she did up. comics. I thought she just did just like uh you know like pinups. Oh, is that not comic book art right there? Looks like it. Well no, it's a pinup. I would have to see like sequentials. Yeah, so just have like five of those on one page. There you go, one page. <laughs> and then there's also <laughs> That's a comic. <laughs> also zero right oh, here. Yeah, right there. <laughs> Is that what's her name? Zuri? No, what's her Zira. name? Zero. Zero. Okay, I can't couldn't remember. That's great. Love yeah, Dee Dee says she doesn't do comics. I oh, she, she said does. in the chat oh, right yeah, now. There's a proof. Um, and then also we have some uh some smaller prints here too. Let me get them out of this plastic. Uh let me see. Okay, we have Zira again, but smaller. <laughs> um <laughs> mini Zira. <laughs> Then we have uh, this one right here, Nosferatu. Oh, uh, oh my gosh, Nah. So you have to have her. Uh, okay, at the very least, you have to have her do a pinup for for one of your books. Come on. Okay, she'll she'll do a cover. cover. Dee, send, yeah. send me send me your 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 rates for a cover. And uh, also, we have this alien here. Oh, nice predator! Oh, wow, cool predator! Awesome. Very cool. I meant Predator, not Alien. Oh my gosh, Nasser. I've Don't embarrass us, Nasser. I've got a pretty good Predator I did a couple years ago. But yeah, those those were all awesome, so thank you for those, Dee. Very cool. Now, hopefully I could get it back into the plastic without bending it. <laughs> Don't ruin it, Nasser. When I got the package, I actually freaked out for a second because I thought uh, that the uh, the little one, I thought that was like original art. Then I looked at it closer. I was like, no, wait, that's that's a print. <laughs> Harris says, well, the president is an alien. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like showing a picture of Superman saying, hey, look, it's, look, it's a drawing of an alien. It's like, yeah, no. <laughs> it's not the alien. Let's see. Oh, I was about to show off my art from Jason, but that's all the way across the room. Yeah, uh, yes. Cause, Framed. Cause <laughs> no, because that, that's where I keep the original, well, most of the original art is uh, uh, over by my long boxes, and that's kind of out of uh, arm's what reach. What art did I give you? Huh? What art did I give you? <laughs> oh, no, it was, um, I won a free one from you, which uh -huh. was... Uh, Doctor Doom, and then you you ended up writing on it, Kick Nasser. So it's actually right. a piece of art I cannot sell because no ah, normie, ah, ah. no <laughs> normie will be like, oh yeah, I understand that. Excellent. And then, and then, oh. um, I, all my artwork will say Kick Nasser on it, so you can't resell it. And then uh, there was also yeah. that uh, pencil sketch of uh, Invincible. Oh right, yes, yes, where he's like pummeling someone. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I have I have both of those uh, over uh, by my long boxes with uh, most of my art. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very very cool. Dee Dee right. said she did thirty one movie monsters for Inktober. Oh wow! See, Dee Dee has more. Uh, she she has more stamina than I do. I, I I've never gotten past the third day of Inktober. I hate Inktober. Okay, I started and I'm just like it's like too much pressure. I'm just like forget it. I'm done. I think for the twenty fifth or twenty eighth day. Really? Wow. And uh, I did across pretty much did across comics character every day. And okay. in uh in twenty eighteen I did awful uh uh sketches for Inktober. Like you know, I have no clue what I'm doing, so I would like draw with like a, a pen or something and then I'd go over it in black sharpie and I'd be like, Look guys, it's my sucky inktober and then no one really like no like I know it was supposed to look crappy, but nobody really cared. I thought it was gonna catch on as a joke. <laughs> Everyone knows you have no sense of humor now, sir. So. 
<laughs> like it was literally like stick figures that I would like just go. I, I'd make it in pen real quick and go over it with a sharpie. I'm like, look at my Inktober, and then everyone Aww. just kind of shrugged. I thought it was funny at least. Oh, poor Nasser. <laughs> DD says, uh, "I have done it five years in a row." Oh wow! Yeah. And then I also laughed at you for you know only getting to the third day. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Yeah, it's just. Uh... I don't know. It's I, I I feel I feel an enormous amount of pressure when I do Inktober. It's like it has to look good, and I and I and I can't I can't do it. It's just uh, bleh. so. I I I don't think I've I I don't even think I've tried Inktober in the last like two years. I just sort of like decides like I hate Inktober. <laughs> Well, this year was my first year trying to do it, so. Uh, cool. Yeah, I, I mean, only it, heard, I only heard about it last year, so. Yeah, I mean, I encourage people to, to, to do it, you know, if, if they're interested. It's just that I, for me, it should be fun. And and, and, and I find that I, I, I put pressure on myself to to do it. And it, and it quickly ends up not being fun. It ends up being a chore and then a headache. And um, and I'm just like, ah, screw it, screw Inktober. I'm like, I'm you like, you could just do something very simple. No one said to, you know, I, go I overboard. I understand that, but I'm talking. Um, this is. Hello. Yeah, I thought it was me, but he cut out. He's he's frozen. I could hear you, Rick. Okay. Anyways, um. Jason, Jason, you could you're frozen. Huh? I was just trying to tell him he's frozen if he can hear us. Oh, yeah, I don't know if he could hear us. But Jason, you could have just drawn like, you know, pumpkins or something for uh Inktober. Just like a pumpkin or a little bat or something. Uh, you know, you didn't have to go all out. Um Yeah, well the thing is you find out what the the keywords are and you you know, you figure out what you're going to do for them in advance. That way you don't have to think ahead of time. You just do. Okay. Uh -oh. Well, he just, he, he left. I think he'll be popping back in now. Okay. It's time to take over the show. <laughs> <laughs> right. So everyone go back a uh, Canadian shield right now. <laughs> yeah. You will uh, not regret getting it. You know, especially that three hundred dollar tier would be great for anybody to get. Uh, you know, getting a figurine of the Canadian Shield eight inches high, five inches wide, four inches deep, and the first one to get it, since there's nobody there yet, gets the piece of art from John, the double page spread. <laughs> okay, saying, he, he, Jason's in the chat saying technical difficulties. Hold on, everyone. Okay, all right. <laughs> can you hear me now? Now we yeah. can hear you. Okay, yeah. Sure, yeah. Right. yeah, well when you uh when you sort of died right now, I was telling you you could have just uh drawn like pumpkins <laughs> or like a little bat or something. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I said, you know, just you know, get the list ahead of time, figure out what you're gonna do yeah. for each of them, and that way you don't have to worry about you know, thinking of what to draw on the right. day off. Uh, yeah, up. yeah, but that that's 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 that. You know, it's uh, I I could do that, but then it's like I kind of feel like I'm cheating. But I, pro I probably should do that. <laughs> that's not cheating. That's just being prepared. It's being prepared. It's is if Batman did it, would it be cheating? No, he'd be he'd be prepared. So it's like. You plan on bringing your pen that day to do Inktober. You don't want to go out and get another pen just for that day. Right. Exactly. So. <laughs> but uh, Dee Dee said, you don't need to do Inktober. You ink all the time and your inks are off. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to go that far. Um I'm struggling right now. <laughs> I'm just drawing. I'm just spotting blacks. I'm struggling. <laughs> it's like ah. Uh... And you got the animated one is here in your chat. Oh, the animated one's here. How you doing? Good seeing you. 
How's school going? Take it fair art says fun stream folks got to run. I'll plug you Rick on a show tonight. Cool. Very good. Uh, what show? Oh, oh probably uh, ease. That man one says I'm good. Thanks. How are you? I'm doing okay. Um, busy, but I'm doing well. I'm uh, just starting to ink this, uh, this first page of uh, Nasser's comic book and uh, trying not to screw it up. So that's going to be the hard part. <laughs> Not screwing it up. Now, Hawk Warrior says, have fun. Oh, I just came, came to leave a like and share. Peace out. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Nighthawk Warrior. Hey, Appreciate Nighthawk. It. Say hi to Nighthawk. He's, all, he's everywhere. I know. Seriously. He's, he's, like, uh, he's like the shadow. He pops up everywhere when you least expect him, like Spanish Inquisition. Yeah. So, um, uh, how, how often would you, ideally, would you like to be putting out issues of uh, Canadian Shield? Once a month. Once a month. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, I, I want you know, my thoughts have always been to be like part of the make it the top big three. You know, I want really? to be as big as DC and Marvel. I want the Canadian Shield and my characters to mm -hmm. be household names. Hmm. Cool. Very good. I have big and lofty dreams. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, what? You want The Rock to play him in a movie? I'm not sure who I'd want. The Rock might be good. Yeah. Whoever you think that. of will be old by the time the movie comes around. That's why I never do that for any of my things. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Movie could come out next year. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. I don't know. I, I don't know who I could see playing this. Ooh, can um, Shield? Yeah. And the only one I can see is, is is a rock because I mean Canadian Shield is huge. Mm. Um, so you know, and a rock, a rock looks like you know he can play a, a Native American. You know, he has looks. Yeah. Um. I'm trying to think of someone else. I mean, I'm sure there's someone out there, but but in terms of just charisma and uh, likability in general, yeah. You know. there, was, there was a movie that I saw, and I don't know who it was. The character wasn't the main character, but there was this big, huge guy in the movie. I think it was a Japanese fighting one or whatever. And it was just this huge guy. I thought he'd be perfect for him, but I have no idea what the movie was or whatever now, so it's like Oh, well. Hmm. And it's like a movie I saw like five or six years ago. Look. Yeah. Well, I guess you can always get that, that kid from Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean that fantastic actor? Yeah, the one who hasn't worked since then? Yeah, exactly. What do you mean? He was just in The Lighthouse, which is one of the best horror movies of, of 2019. No, I'm not talking about uh, Sparkly Vampire. I'm talking about the werewolf kid. The, one, oh. the, the, the Indian one. <laughs> oh. oh, I thought you were talking about because me and you had this discussion. The, the pale other day. Brit. You want the pale Brit, the pl skinny Brit, to play the uh, to play the the Native American uh, brick house. Is that oh, it? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect casting, Nasser. <laughs> uh, uh, and that's why I'm always going to have a say in something like that. <laughs> mm. Yeah. You don't want Nas to take, take control of your casting decisions in your movie. Oh, what's wrong with white people now, huh? I don't know. <laughs> Nothing. You tell I me, am, Nothing. I am one. <laughs> oh, I don't believe you. <laughs> but um, I believe in keeping characters who they are. Yeah. So, so you're not gonna you're not gonna uh, gender swap them for the movie. No. You're not you're not no. gonna hire. You're not gonna hire hire a a, a, a brave uh, a brave woman to play him in the movie. No, I'm not, I'm not, no, no, I'm not gonna hire. Uh, Why do you hate strong a women? Beautiful, beautiful Why do you hate man. strong women? I'm, I'm surrounded no, I'm not, by bigots. No, I'm not gonna <laughs> hire a beautiful midget to play a beautiful. Oh, cool! Midget. Oh, a hot midget—that'd be great. 
Oh, that'd be awesome. Yes, get Peter, Peter, Peter Dinklage to play uh, Canadian Shield. That'd be awesome. I would watch that movie. I, I watched it twice. So all we all we need to do is uh just send the word out to Peter Dinklage's uh agent that he's wanted for, to play the Canadian Shield. And it's another big, pretty big actor. He's pretty well built too, although he's more white. Uh, the guy, uh, the guy from um, mm -hmm. Game of Thrones. That. Uh, oh, the uh, Man Mountain guy. Well, one of two actually. Yeah, the, that guy's the, huge. the guy that always had the, uh, well, the helmet on his head at the end. Oh, his bro that guy's brother. Um, yeah. Or the or the brother, either one. Uh, yeah, well, I can't remember any of their names. I, I I barely watched show. My wife watched it a lot, but um, the Hound. Yeah. The, and then and then his brother, who was like the bigger guy. Um, yeah. I'm not even I'm not even convinced that that was like a real person. I think that was like, <laughs> part of me thinks it was all CGI. <laughs> his older brother, he was so he's so massive, but um. Let's see. Okay. Something you could look up, probably. Yeah. All right. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to squeeze underneath the camera so I can get close to the page so I can start inking it. It's like, ah. Mm. I'm like having to contort myself. Hold on one second. Let me change chairs. Let me change See if that works better. It might work better. Oh, ooh, it does work better. I'm lower. All right. You guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Is Nasha still here? I think so. I don't hear him. Nasha, are you here? Nasha walked away. Nasha tried. It snuck out for a. To get some beer or something. I don't know what he's doing. Hmm. Ouch. Dang it. Um, hmm. Now, what's the best way to. All right. I will. Mm. All right. Is that kid about to pee? <laughs> I'm sorry. What? I said, is that kid about to pee? No, he's not. He just has his hands in front of him. I know it looks like he's about to pee, um, but uh, he is not. Um, <laughs> I didn't even think about that. It doesn't. It doesn't look like he's about to pee. Huh? Yeah, what? it does. No, it doesn't look like that. <laughs> oh. What? <laughs> Sorry, Nasser. I just ruined it. I just ruined the book. I apologize. This uh oh, you guys still hear me? Yeah. Okay. I'm uh, feeling my uh my headphones are about to go out. Um, you'll still be able to hear me, but I will not be able to hear you. Hold on oh. one second. Not good. Yeah. But uh, we'll keep talking until uh until the thing. Peter's out. All right, I'm lowering. Ow, dang it. I keep hitting it, the thing with my head, <laughs> the camera. Um, all right, let me start. Ah, dang it. <laughs> you're going to hear dang it a lot during the stream yeah. as I try to think. <laughs> right, that's, that, that's his catchphrase. Yes. Oh, I'm probably the best tier on the campaign, my campaign, mm -hmm. and the most expensive. I'm probably not going to get anybody to get it. It's 1500 yeah. bucks. Basically, you get everything, and I hand deliver it. I take a plane oh, or a bus. I take a plane <laughs> or a bus, whatever it is, you know, I need to do to get to you. And but that's only available for people in Canada and the states. Okay, so so if I if I live in London, you're not going to fly to my place and hand deliver it. Unless it's London, Ontario, no. Okay, what if I live in like a really, really, really bad neighborhood, in like the south end of Chicago? You gonna hand deliver it? Sure. 
Okay. Bye, I'm taking a cab from the airport, you know, or the. <laughs> The, 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 the cabs don't go in those areas. They'll, they'll drop you off maybe like three out three three miles outside outside of uh, Nasser's home, and then you have to walk the rest of the way. Oh, then I'll be getting on a bus. <laughs> yeah, buses don't go there either. They they they, they, they avoid Nasser's air, Nasser's neighborhood. Just sort because of. of Nasser, right? Yeah, yeah, mainly because of Nasser. Yes. You got awful redneck gaming here, and it says hello, 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 everyone. Oh, hey, awful redneck. Good seeing you. Ah. Mm. All right. Don't screw this up. Don't screw this up. Don't screw this up. <laughs> well, screw it up. Screw it up. Screw it up. I know. Seriously, man. It's like. Inking by itself is nerve wracking. Inking on stream is 300 times more nerve wracking. <laughs> Inking on stream with other people on stream with you is five gazillion times more. Oh. Well, keep keep the uh, keep the whiteout handy. I know, seriously. Mm. No pressure. Yeah. Uh huh. No pressure. Yeah. So no you pressure. Just, so I just have to keep yeah. reminding myself. Nasser hasn't paid me yet. Nasser hasn't paid me yet. Nasser hasn't paid me yet. Yeah. So, so. it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be exactly. done. Exactly. <laughs> Nasser hasn't paid me, so it doesn't have to be perfect. So. Yeah. Whatever. The, can, the campaign actually needs to fulfill for him to pay you, right? <laughs> um. No. Well. Yeah. Uh, well. I, I. Not necessarily. Nasha can take out a loan and pay me, and then and then hope that the uh, makes enough money in the uh, <laughs> in the campaign to uh, to make that money back. Yeah. <laughs> um. But not, not, Nasha's chosen to to let the let the customers decide whether or not I get paid though. Yeah. So, so it's uh, it's it's up to the customers. Yeah. If no one buys a book. I don't get paid. <laughs> Kick Nasha. Yeah, so that, that's why we need you all to show up. <laughs> Let's see. So, Nasa, what's next in your plans of world domination? Uh, I don't know. Take a nap. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean something productive. What what creative well, things are well, you working on? I mean, I was I was I was just working on on a book about a uh, about a, a possessed doll, but then. You sent me the link, and so I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll get on. You know, I wrote enough. I did, you know, uh, thirty-eight hundred words today. That's enough. Oh, good. Um, I do think the possessed dog was, has been done, Nasser, quite a few times. <laughs> it's been done, but I haven't done it. Sure. <laughs> it hasn't been. It hasn't been done right. <laughs> exactly. Just, just, just you wait. I'm working on. I'm, I'm writing. I'm writing a novel series right now about dolls. About uh, it's it, each each book is a different haunted doll, um, mm. and uh, I mean that that's what I'm working on right now. I have a bunch of books already written uh, that I'm ready to publish. I just need money that I don't have. So mm. uh, <laughs> just just working on that backlog. I've Plenty of novels mm -hmm. I want to put out that I can't yet, um, yeah, because covers are expensive and editing is expensive and all that stuff and yeah, um, uh, I mean uh, that that's also why we, we haven't gotten too far into uh, Blood Reaper book two, just uh, some budget issues, but uh, yeah, we we've, we have the cover and the first page done, so you know, yeah. but I'm 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 fine with that sort of uh, slow progress on the book just because. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be late again. We were uh, like four months late, um, right? So I, I don't want to be late again. And uh, so yeah. I'm just uh, even if it's slow, I'm I'm just uh, gonna wait it out until we have it uh, all done or mostly done, and Good. then uh, launch it. And I do have a superhero comic which is being mm -hmm. worked on right now. I uh, can't right. announce the artist yet. He does 
not want to be announced until he's done with it um, mm-hmm. or almost done with it. Um, cool. Awesome. So so the first issue, uh, all the designs are done. He's thumbnailing it right now. And uh-huh. um, so I can't really name him or say much about it. But Matthew that, Weldon. That, that, uh, no. You could probably say enough more about the project if you wanted to. You just can't name the artist. Um, Since the project I'm, is yours, you know, he's just drawing it. Well, he owns half of it, but I'm, I'm, oh. I'm. We're we're sort of just keeping it under wraps until he's ready to uh, be announced, and then we we will uh, talk more about it. But uh, there is a superhero comic coming soon. Um, cool. So um, if I had to guess, that that might be what's next after uh, after my and Jason's book. Um, then me and Jason might do a superhero comic too, because uh, I, I wrote part of one. I wrote part of one. Um, I don't know, a year and a half ago, and Jason read it, and he was like, this is okay, but we have to take out the degeneracy. And So no, I thought no about it for a year and a half. And no degeneracy, like, Nasser. <laughs> <laughs> and so I thought about it for a year and a half, and I was like, fine, we could take out the decapitations. <laughs> it, it wasn't decapitations <laughs> that he wanted yeah, to I'm not going to. I'm not. I'm not going to say what it was. <laughs> it, 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 it it involves it involves donkeys and midgets. That's all. All I can say. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> That's a clean way to put it. <laughs> just, not, the, the, I can't. I can't draw this. My mom's reading it. <laughs> Nasser was like, "Oh man." Uh, Eric says, "Nasser, you need to do a story about the Mandela effect." Hmm, I don't know. What's the Mandela effect? I'm not familiar with it. Oh, well, it's a bunch. Uh, for me, it's a bunch of people think, you know, like say they think somebody died like years ago, and then they find out they did. Oh, it. oh, like Mandela. So somehow they think, you know, the time stream has been altered. Uh, because they remember it differently than uh, most yeah. everybody else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, awful g- redneck gaming says, I always like when Nasser is on stream. The moment he gets kicked off tickles me every time. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I already kicked Nasser once in, during the stream. So. Oh, yeah. You already missed that. Yeah. I kicked him once. Yeah, that's, that's my uh, that's my limit. I kick Nasser at least once per stream. Uh, Dillard says, Superhero degenerates. How drawl. Oh yeah, he was just telling me on my stream how much he doesn't like Watchmen. Who? Dillard. He's Dillard. Dillard doesn't like anything good. <laughs> uh, he he might. Have, did he mean the comic book or did he mean the TV series? Oh, he meant the he meant the comic. We we're talking about the comic. We we're talking about. Uh... Hmm. We we're talking about what? Uh, Dave uh, Gibbons. Oh, Dave Gibbons. It's like Nasser. Sure. I think she's had a phone call. Is Nasser sure still there? <laughs> hey Rick, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, nothing much went robo. He he disappeared. Yeah, sorry guys. My my internet does not like StreamYard, so uh randomly sometimes it, it'll kick me out. Okay. And well, I can't I can't and I can't hear you guys and your internet your, has um, good taste kicking you. So <laughs> and your and your guys' uh uh pictures on the screen just go into like a loading circle sort of thing and I can't okay. hear you guys and it'll be mm-hmm. like fifteen seconds and then I'm back. So if I ever drop out, that's uh <laughs> that's why. Gotcha. Eric Hawkins says Jimmy kick Nasser. I did earlier in the stream. I didn't this time. This time it was Nasser's own internet. Nasser's own internet can't stand him, so you know. Um Dillard Draw says, I, I didn't think I'd be able to kick Nasser from the chat, but I guess it worked. <laughs> Wait, did he? I don't know. I'm not saying anything in the chat. No, 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 he didn't. He's joking. As usual. Really? <laughs> It sounds like something he'd do. Yes, he would if he could, but <clears throat> he doesn't have the power. <clears throat> he would if he could, but he can't tell the chance he doesn't throw him. 
I'm sorry, what'd you say, Rick? I said he would if he could, but he can't tell he can't, so he don't, won't tell he don't. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. As uh, Alpha Red Inc. said, not for self kick. Yes. Hey, Joshua Gilliam, how you doing? But no, sir, if you if you ever have a chance, check out that new Dracula series from Netflix. Perhaps it's pretty uh, it's pretty decent. Is, is that it, is it an is it a Netflix original? Yes, it is. Well, really? it's it's, B, it's a BB no, it's a BBC uh, production. Um, Netflix is showing it. So well, let me um, let me type it in. Uh, is is it's, it? Uh, Okay, it's got one season, right? Yeah, it's only three episodes. Each episode is like an hour and a half. But it's it, yeah. it's based on Bram Stoker's novel. It definitely is not a um, faithful version of it. None of them are. <laughs> well, the, you ever see the Louis Jordan version from, from 1977? That's very faithful. Uh, no, I haven't seen the 70 ones. I always hear about them. I've seen... Uh, well, I have a couple of them. I have the 1931, uh, uh-huh. that one, Bela Lugosi, and right. I have to look on my shelf. It's part of a collection, but right. um, and I've seen that one. I, I like that one. Yeah, that one's very good. The Christopher Lee one's very good from Hammer Films back in the 60s. The um, Frank Langella one from the 70s is very good. And the Louis Jordan one from 1977 is excellent. That That one is the closest to the novel. And it, and you, and it's on it's on YouTube the whole thing. Oh, okay. Louis, Jor- Louis Jordan. Yeah. You, you don't have to just just watch it. It's cool. Oh, okay, I'll get it on Blu-ray. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Dylan says Black oh, I'll get Dracula. Blackula meets Black Dracula, a Spike Lee joint or B E T. So was that like Blackula looking in the mirror? Because Black is basically Black Jack Dracula. <laughs> You ever seen Black Hilo Nasser? Nah. Oh my gosh, it's a classic Nasser. You have to watch it. One of the best black exploitation movies ever made. I'll think about it. Yeah. I'll get it for you for Christmas if you don't if you don't watch it. Okay, get it for me for <laughs> Christmas. That'd actually be pretty nice. <laughs> I'm gonna remind you. <laughs> okay, well, you, that's can, fine. you can get it for me in July for my birthday, the 11th. Oh, for your birthday? Okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I have such a uh, a long list of uh, movies to great pick movie. up. Great, great list of uh, great movies that you've failed to watch so far. You have a huge list. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. I don't even know how to reply to that, but I have I have like I have over I have like over a hundred uh, movies and books in my uh, Amazon save for later section. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah it, 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 you, you do not want. So to I'll, I'll afford them all in another lifetime. Yeah, you don't want to see my save for later section on my Amazon account. It's like it's like over a hundred <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I have so many in there. It's like I hear of something new every day, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then they suggest a bunch of stuff, and so I just mm-hmm. put it in there. And I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm waiting for a few that that go on sale in the summer from uh, from mm-hmm. the Criterion Collection. Uh, <laughs> a few, of the, I'm waiting to get a few uh, Cronenberg uh, movies like Videodrome, and there's a couple oh. other ones uh, mm-hmm. in in my cart. But I know they're going to be on sale sometime in the summer, so I'm like oh, waiting right. for some. Yeah. Of them. <laughs> mm-hmm. I did just get his movie Scanners, though. I haven't seen it yet. I just got it. Uh... Oh, you haven't seen Scanners yet? No, not yet. Well, I, I just ordered it, actually. I just ordered it a couple days ago. Okay. Yeah, no, definitely definitely watch. Definitely watch it. Till it says, vampires have no reflection, Jimmy. You vampire noob. Uh, it just uh, depends on the legend. <laughs> <laughs> Best vampire movie though was Fright Night, nineteen eighty five. There's, it's just no contest. No and, uh, vampire movie is better than that. 
I wouldn't say that, but it's a good oh, you movie. You wouldn't say that. Name one. Name one that's better than 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 uh, Fright Night 1985. Um, I would say um, Salem's Lot. No, not even yeah. close. Yes, it is. Yes, it no. is. Yes, it is. No, as much as it I is. love Toby Hooper, no, it's not. It's, it's not even it's, close. It's better. Fright Night's no, good. Not. Yes, it is. Sorry, not, sir. <laughs> You lose. Good day, sir. No, we just went. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> that that's such a long, like, like I think it's like four hours, though, isn't it? Uh, Salem's Lot. I watched part of it. Yeah, yeah, some miniseries. And, it, and yeah, I, I, I watched part of it, and it was so long. I was just like, I'll save this for later, and I kind of. Took it out, put it back on my bookshelf, and I haven't played it again since. Mm -hmm. Eric Hawkins says Lost Boys. <laughs> Lost Boys is good, but it's nowhere near Fright Night. Yes, it says uh, Blade. Um, I haven't seen Blade. You haven't seen Blade? I actually <laughs> what? The, what? Nah, sir. Yeah. The you have not seen Blade. No, I have not seen Blade. Gosh. The, the best. I, you, we, need, we need to, we need to start a GoFundMe to kidnap Nasser and then strap him to a table uh, like uh, uh, what was it, Clockwork Orange? Have his eyes propped up and force him to watch all these classic movies that he has refused to watch because he's watching to uh, what was it, uh, Child's Play three for the twentieth time. Ridiculous, <laughs> Nasser! It's criminal. That's, that's way too many steps. If you just buy them. And, nah, and sir. Mail him, mail him to my PO box. It is. It is. <laughs> well, Jason, no, you have my regular beautiful. address. You could send it there. But it's everyone else, will not sir, for you not to have watched these movies. <laughs> no, you everyone else, these movies. Everyone, everyone else, you, you could just send it, send it to my PO box. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, the oh, best no, vampire movie is actually Thirty Days of Night. Oh yes, that's, that's a great. Have you seen that? Thirty. Wait, days what? Of what night did you say? 30 days. 30 I can't hear you. What? 30, 30 days. days of night. No, I have the book. I was going to read the book first. Stop it. Hey, watch the movie. Watch the movie, Nasser. But the book is on my shelf. Have you read it? No. Oh, shut up, Nasser. <laughs> That's why I said I got to read the book first. Of course it's I haven't read it. It's on your shelf. You haven't read it. You uh -huh. know how many other things are on my shelf? <sighs> Nasser. Uh, I just find it the most realistic vampire movie ever. Personally, and then they brought out number two, and it sucked. Literally. <laughs> okay. Uh. <laughs> Late. Late two. And, uh, Juan, I can't hear you. It's, it's, it sounds like you're standing like a hundred feet away. Sounds like Jason's saying yeah. something, but I can't hear him. I just can't hear you. Yeah. Oh, now I could hear you. Okay, sorry guys. This is like the boomer stream where we're always having some some problems. So it says best vampire fire movie is Black Stallion. That's uh, racist. Isn't that um a horse movie? <laughs> yeah, that's the joke. The Vampire Horse. This one for you, Nasser. A Vampire Horse. <laughs> okay, that, that'll be that'll be my next book. Vampire Horse. So, anybody in the chat there want to know anything about the Community Shield or the campaign? Oh, he said his headphones cut out, or keep cutting out. Oh, okay. 
Abraham Lincoln Vampire Killer. I haven't seen that. I want to see it though. It looks like a fun movie. No, I haven't seen that either. A Vampire in Brooklyn is a classic, says Dillard. <laughs> I've, I've heard of it. I haven't seen it. Jason, are you back? I think we're... Jason? He might be listening off stream. Are you listening? Uh, type in the chat if you're listening via YouTube, but uh, or you can hear us in the back room. Jason. Illustration by design. Okay, I don't think he can hear us. <laughs> Yeah, I got no clue. <laughs> I just asked him in the chat. <laughs> I can't hear you cross comics. No, my headphones are recharging right now. So I am currently um, deaf in a sense. <laughs> um, I can read what you're saying in the chat and that's about it. So you can communicate, we communicate with me that way. Um, but uh, yeah, my headphones are dead for the moment. Hopefully if, right. if, if they recharge right. for about 10 minutes, I'll be able to, to put them back on. I'll be able to listen to, to you guys again. So all right, apologize. well, we can I guess hear I'm going to I'm I'm dip out for now, but uh, if, if he's still going in a little bit, I'll be back. I apologize uh, for anything Nasser may be saying. Uh, <laughs> That's even funnier because he couldn't hear me, but uh, <laughs> it was, it was nice talking to you, Rick. I have the channel struck. Peace. Later, Nasser. Have a great day. He left because of you. <laughs> Ah, oh, Nasser's leaving. What? Uh, please. They can hear me, Eric Hawkins. I just can't hear them. Um, off of that game said he's in the zone. Nasser says goodbye. Ah, Nasser's leaving. What? Nasser. Um, yeah, John, you can still come on. Please feel free. You have the link. So. Link up. Nasser, why'd you leave? He had stuff to do. <laughs> Off of Redneck Gaming says, Jiminy is appropriated deafness. Really? Temporarily. Temporary deafness. So I am forced to concentrate on inking Nasser's comic. While Nasser has abandoned me during the live stream, Nasser. Dead burn it. Dead burn it, Nasser. Let's see. I guess John Durr is coming in, but um, Cross Comics says um, he has stuff to do. He said he might come back. Okay, cool. Come back, Nasser, when you are available. Um, Alfred Redneck Game says, get her done, Nasser. So, um, yeah. Um, let's see. In the meantime, while I'm waiting for uh, John to come in, what was it raining? Hold on. Yes, it is. It's pouring outside. It's raining. It's pouring. The old man is snoring. Okay. Uh. 
All right, so Rick is singing, entertaining everyone. Let me put some music on until John shows up. My headphones comes back on. Or um, actually, let me post a link for Canadian Shield again. So you guys, if you haven't already, you can purchase it, check it out, all that good stuff. So everybody here is the camp. And someone else is showing up. All right, this is a uh, cross comics uh, link to uh, Canadian Shield. Hello, my name is Rick Piper, the creator and owner of Cross Comics and all uh, which it entails, some of which is uh, my character, Electide the Wiz. Oz okay. Hold on. I'm adding John Dillard. He's, a, he's here in the chat. What up, boy? Uh, Insecto, the Flame, Snow but the one that I want to set it all off with that I want to bring well, it to say. you today is the Canadian Shield. He is from a time long ago. He's been brought into the press. He's given a suit with fantastic powers, and that suit is from the future. Thus, where the past, the present, and the future collide because the suit and him are in the here and the now. So, take a read as you look down. Hopefully you will be very much interested. This is a great project to get into. It's not just the birth of a character, it's the birth of a universe. The crossverse of cross comics. So are you hey, done John. with your commercial, Rick? Well, I was going to play the second one, which is only like... Oh, go for seconds. it. I'll wait. Okay, John, can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you just fine, yeah. Okay, sorry about that. I had to let my headphones... Uh, that wasn't very long. Are you yeah, sure it has enough long. charge? Faster than a speeding boat, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Look! It's a raven! No, it's a plane! Wait! This is the wrong hero. Oh, well, it may be the wrong hero. Okay. So, John. Yes, what sir. This is the Canadian! Hey, Mom, what's going on here? Oh, my God. This commercial just doesn't end, huh? <laughs> Sorry. That's a, okay, it's a commercial for the Canadian Shield. Okay. So, John, you're working on the um, the buckler. Yes. Right now, I am currently working on uh, the buckler ash can, the 13 oh. to 14 page 13. ash can that is going along with the Canadian Shield. Okay. Very cool. Um, and that is found on the same link as the Canadian Shield, correct? It sure is. You just got to scroll down to find a perk that says plus ash can. That's the one that will get you the ash can with the book. Or, or you can just add it on. Okay, and put the link for the in one that, the uh, chat. Yeah, yeah. So what is going on with everybody's streams lately? Everybody sounds like garbage. Well, I my computer is halfway across the room from my desk, my drawing table. So that's why. With me. Oh, oh, okay. So I am quasi yelling. Um, and is your character is just called the Buckler or the Canadian Buckler? Uh, in this, in this uh, ash can, uh -huh. he is he is known as the Canadian Buckler. Okay. Uh, this ash is the ash can. This this story, this mm -hmm. little self contained story. This is right. the origin of how he becomes a villain, and. Cool. 
when he becomes a villain, he drops the Canadian. He becomes just the buckler. Ooh. He also loses his cape. Oh, he loses his cape. <laughs> and his, uh, his, his symbol on his chest changes to actually a symbol on his back. <laughs> Cool. It goes right. from a it goes from a black a black bee to a uh, bee to a, a, a pair of dark gray moose horns on his back his upper back. Mm-hmm. Very cool. So it, now, is he actually going to grow horns? <laughs> no, 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 no. That was for the that was for the Canadian Shield that you drew those. those That's ones. correct. Right. Okay, got it. So the buffer <laughs> does not have horns. Okay. Very the buckler cool. is more of a uh he's more he he has the look of like a almost like a I, I don't want to say dad bod but uh-huh. it, just like imagine Al Bundy right but uh a lot beefier okay he's not young and 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 hot he's not a he's not a svelte superhero he's more of a big lumbering right kind of knock you out in one punch kind of guy you know no i got you i got you so um are you free to tell his his origins or how much how much or is that you want is that you want to say that for the ash can itself no 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 no, no, i'll I'll tell you anything you want to know um there is is a um, slight echo that's because you're not using your headphones correct well i am using my headphones but um hold on that's okay i can just lower it on my end a little bit but it's probably bothering everyone else so Um, i wouldn't know (laughs) <laughs> I'm not hearing it. Can you still hear it? Uh, let me see. Nope, I don't hear it no more. Okay, good. That's bad. Okay. So um, he says, show the buckler mobile. That thing is sweet. You want to see the buckler mobile? I'll show you. Sure. The, I have it right here. Check it in. Check it in. Look at it. Look at. What the heck is that? Uh, what, do you what? Think? what do you think, Jiminy? It's, oh, cool. Volkswagen. Uh... Bam. It's a Volkswagen B- a bus caravan with a top actually uh, retracts there. Oh, neat. It's painted in the 18 colors. You know, this is the Buckler's colors here. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. And they got the, the, street, the street sweeper, 50 cal on top. Oh, man. Awesome. I took the door off because I needed to do a little drawing, but I got to put mm-hmm. it back on. Very cool. Um, so it's uh, going to be sort of like the, the Punisher's van? Yeah, essentially. Very cool. Awesome. 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 Um, so tell tell me the story of the buckler. What makes him turn bad? Okay, well, I don't know if you've ever been a fan of somebody, like a like a real diehard fan. Um, Doctor Who. Okay, so who's your favorite doctor? Tom Baker, of course. Mm. Okay, so imagine you you're walking down the streets of uh, I don't know, Cardiff, right? And you 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 run into Tom Baker. Tom Baker. And you're like, oh, Dan, you're dressed up like Tom Baker because you're on your way to a, a, a Doctor Who convention, you know? And you're like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm your biggest fan, right? And right. And you, you walk up and you, you you trip and fall and he laughs you to scorn and he like nudges the person next to him and they all start pointing at you and laughing, right? Like it would devastate you. Yes. So what happens here in this story is the the, the buckler... The Canadian Buckler is a super fan, super fan of the Canadian Shield. And he does his darndest to emulate him and walk and talk, and he tries to live his life by the virtues that the Canadian Shield espouses. You know, he even goes out every night. Right. And he uh, he fights crime. Now, granted, there's not a lot of crime in Winnipeg, Canada, which has the lowest crime rate of any city in Canada, which has the lowest crime rate of almost any country. But, you know, he does what he can. Right. Now, he's been wanting for a long time to get the attention of the Canadian Shield. Now, in this story, the Canadian Shield is out, out looking for a sidekick. Okay. And he is in Winnipeg this night. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So he's so he's he's jazzed up. He's ready to. He's like he's he's happy. He's excited. He's happy, he's this excited. is one chance to show his hero to show what he got. What he got because he does have some powers. He he has the strength of three men. Okay. And that's a whole different origin story about how to get how he got that. But mm-hmm. uh, 
you know, he's out there, he starts his rounds. And as mm-hmm. soon as he starts his rounds, he, he can feel, he, he can notice that the Canadian Shield is watching and he is watching. Right. From, from high up top, the tallest building in Winnipeg, the Shield is right. watching. Mm-hmm. He hears a cry for help. Yeah. There's a woman in peril. Uh huh. And he, 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 he's almost giddy because you know, this, is, this is actually a real crime going on, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. He is saying we do have an echo, though. Oh, there's, there's an echo. Is yeah. it still going? I don't know. I hear it sometimes. I sometimes. sometimes I don't. So do I. So do I. I hear it sometimes. Like now, I hear it. But before, when you were talking, I did not hear it. Hmm. Right. 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 So <laughs> I don't hear it at all. Okay. Go. Continue. So he hears this lady, you know, crying, and you know, help, help me, help me. So he runs over and he sees that she's being chased. She's being mm-hmm. accosted by another woman. Right. And this woman is trying to, she's a, she's a, a voracious lesbite and she's trying to force herself upon this, this woman. Okay. And he, 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 she ends up pulling out a knife. She's has, she has this woman at, at knife point, you know? So mm-hmm. he says, well, that's, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta stop this. So he comes down, you know, does a flip or whatever. And he does his nice superhero landing and he startles right. them and he yells at them, you know, stop, you know, stop what you're doing. Right. Now, because he comes out from behind them and startles uh-huh. this the perpetrator, she gets, uh, you know, she gets surprised and her hand slips and accidentally stabs the the other woman in the neck with the knife. Oh no! So when this happens, <laughs> this is when the Canadian Shield feels that he has to intervene. So he comes down, you know, and you know, you know essentially just says, you know, shut all this down. This is this, right. is, this can't this can't go on. You're messing right. up as a superhero. I got to mm-hmm. get this girl to the hospital. You know, right. you deal with whatever you got to deal with, but whatever you're going to do, don't do it around here and take off that stupid costume because you ain't no hero. Oh. And uh, takes off. Dun, dun, dun. So he's devastated, right? He's um, he's like, he's he's shaking. He's on his mm-hmm. knees. You know, he's actually crying, like, you know, right. visible tears in public. Right. And uh, everyone starts I, laughing at him. Yeah. <gasps> no. There's a girl that sees what happens that's taking out the trash from her work. And she uh, starts to laugh at him. Oh. Uh, and he starts to choke her and accidentally he's telling her the whole time, shut up, stop laughing. Uh, and he, <laughs> he accidentally uh, chokes her to death. Stop it. Oh, um, that's terrible. Dead, sir. And this is the night he becomes a villain. This is the night of descent. Mm-hmm. This is what the ash can is called. It's called the buckler, the night of descent. Dang. Mm-mm-mm. We don't even be nice to him. Mm-hmm. So, so that is the, uh, that is the story. I mean, there's, cool. a, there's a couple of little hidden things in there, a little extra, because it's a dark comedy. Right, yeah. The entire yeah. the entire idea of the buckler is a dark comedy. Mm-hmm. But this is just a, a small snippet. This is the origin of how he became a villain. Yeah. Uh, hold on one second. I think someone's at the door. Why do I got to hold on? You should go answer your door. <laughs> I'm sorry, what's that, Rick? I was just saying, I, as you can see, I have some of the pages no, up here from the book last Yeah, the page that you're showing right right now is the is the buckler um, making his rounds. And on top there, that's the Canadian Shield kind of surveying uh, the city, watching okay. the buckler do his thing. Oh wow! How did you do? Is that all inked? Go back. Mm. What? Go back to that one page where, where he's looking over this, the um, cityscape. Oh, that, I think that's Rick doing that. No, he's talking. Awesome. Is that all inked by you? Wow. Yeah. Dang! Ouch! That hurts just looking at that. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was no joke. I had a, uh, I had a nice little, uh, nice little cramp in my forefinger for for a day. Oh man, that is some, <laughs> that's a major ink in there. Make me look bad. <laughs> what is this? Oh, okay. And the uh, the Canadian buckler is going to be all in black and white. Now, I, oh. when I scan it in, I am going to be putting in some some grayscale. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be black. It's going to be black and white. No color. Yeah. 
Very good. Yeah, we need we need some good black and white comics out there. So. Oh, that's when he makes his appearance to uh, to startle the uh, the perpetrator mm-hmm. during his superhero landing right there. Ah. <laughs> 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 oh, you see, I took your advice there and I blacked out that area under the cape. It looks fantastic. It looks way better. Oh, good, good. Yeah, it looks good. I mean, it looks looks like really good art. So, yeah, I encourage everyone to go and order the Canadian Shield. The link is in the uh, in the chat. So, um, Shield and the Canadian Buckler Ashcan. You can order them both on the same Indiegogo link, which is in the chat right now. So. Right, and if you act, actually, if you're one of the next, um, I believe it's eight or seven people. Uh huh. Yeah, we're down to we're down to seven. We're down to seven. Okay, the next seven people that back a, a physical tier. Yeah, um, are going to be getting artwork from the Ashcan, uh, physical artwork. Oh, really? Yes. So yeah, the next yeah, seven uh, people who order your Ashcan will get physical artwork. No, no, from no. The it order the Canadian Shield. Or the Canadian it with Shield. the Ashcan, without the Ashcan. But the next seven people that order a physical copy, some, not the digital, but they actually get something. Right. They're, yeah. they're going to be getting. I'm going to be chopping up the original art for this book and uh, and getting and uh, hand, giving it out, like oh, okay. raffling it off. Oh heck! No, okay, yeah. okay, wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. That's a little bit not true. Okay. Okay. The next ahead. seven people, yes, are going to be getting one second. Let me grab the picture here. Yes, yes. I did a, I did a, a nine panel page. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was about to show it, John. Uh, this one here. Uh, hold on. Let me make you let's see. Close this off. We'll move. Yeah, I, okay, I got it right now. here. You a little bigger now. Okay, yeah, that nine-panel page. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be chopping this up. Yeah. And uh, the next seven people, because it's already been claimed by three people, but the right. next seven people that order anything are going to be uh-huh. getting uh, oh, one of those cards. Oh, very cool. Awesome. Now, it doesn't matter who you are or when you backed or whatever, anybody that's that's backed the, the Canadian Shield, mm-hmm. I am going to the rest of the pages, I'm only going to be keeping like one or two pages from the book. The rest are going to be all chopped up. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be giving out original artwork from the book to everybody. We're just going to be raffling it off to everybody wow. that's backed. Oh, fantastic. Very cool. Yeah. So everybody, please uh, please order the Canadian Shield and, uh, you know, pick up the Buckler ash can and, uh, you know, be up for a chance to win some fantastic artwork, original art from, uh, from uh, John Dillard. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, there's that one tier, the $300 tier to get the Canadian Shield books plus the figurine. And now, who, made, who made the figurine? Uh, George Peter Gatsis. Oh, wow. Okay. He designed cool. the figurine, him and okay. Rick. Okay, great. And, and uh, the, 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 the next person to back that tier, the $300 tier, mm-hmm. um, not only are they going to be getting the books and what everything they ordered, but mm-hmm. I'm also going to be giving away that double splash page that I've been working on of oh. the Canadian shield coming down and stopping mm-hmm. all the shenanigans. Okay. Very cool. And that's going to be framed, mm-hmm. packaged up and sent out. Awesome. So everybody, please get on that. That's awesome. Yeah. And also now are still trying to figure out what we're doing in terms of tears and stuff. It's uh. Well, how many pages is this book? I see you're working on it diligently. There's a lot you're working on here. Yeah, but they tend to be the same pages. <laughs> like, uh, this is page one. <laughs> you know, I'm working on it every day, and it's, it's, it's the same three pages. Um, but I'm working on page one, inking it right now. Uh, the whole book is 20 pages total. So it's not that big. Oh, yeah? Yeah, but it's just... Uh, it, what, what, whenever, I, um, whenever I live stream, it takes me twice as long to do stuff that... I, that I would usually take because, you know, I'm, I'm having to f- film and focus on other things other than just drawing. Um, oh, yeah. so, that's, so that slows me down. So, um, yeah, it's, I'll, I'll probably have it done by the time the campaign ends, which will be the end of or the middle of May. So because I have to, you know, I have to, I have to ink it, I have to, letter it i have to lay the whole thing out and everything oh you're so. gonna be lettering it yeah how yeah. are you at lettering i'm good um you know i, I jiminy jiminy what's your yeah. lettering page rate 
my lettering page right because i, I, I need somebody to letter this buckler ash can because i am hot trash at lettering <laughs> um <laughs> let me let me think about it because i i, I never consider lettering it for anyone else I, I letter my own stuff mm. um but i can i can do it um it's just a you know i just didn't, never even considered doing it for anyone well else. uh you know keep it in the back of your mind yeah no i mean i, I i'd be happy to do it it's just i'd never even thought about a page rate for it so <laughs> um but I'll, I'll get back to you is that okay that's perfect perfect okay cool yeah i mean i i i enjoy lettering it's just that um you know i enjoy drawing a lot more <laughs> right yeah so i don't i don't i mean unless i'm actually having to letter something for uh for work i usually don't don't really i don't, I don't really do it for for fun like i i draw for fun mm -hmm. lettering for fun is kind of it sounds kind of weird <laughs> That's the thing I'm thinking about, actually. Uh, I don't know, dude, because I enjoy, um, uh -huh. I enjoy inking. I don't necessarily yeah. enjoy pencils. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can. Yeah, I know. I understand. Um, I I don't really enjoy inking. I because I've always always thought about being a a penciler. So when it came to to um to inking, I always assumed it's like, oh, you know, they'll just hire an inker to to ink my stuff, and then you know, I start when I started freelancing i realized it's like you know there is no other anchor to ink my stuff other than me yeah. you know so um you gotta be a jack of all trades in this business yeah so i just kind of had to learn it i'm still learning it you know it's just a, um so i'm just sort of trying to glean from other artists like how to how to do it as best i can so it's a ongoing process but where is rick did he disappear no, I'm here. Rick. Rick likes to just hang out in the background and not say anything. Yeah, he's not I'm muted, here. I don't think. Well, um, no. no I'm he's, here. He's playing forking. Maybe he's maybe he's sleeping. Maybe he's taking a nap. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can hear you, Rick. I don't know why Jiminy can't hear you, but I can hear you. Oh, is Rick there? Yeah, he's, he's talking. Him? He's not really talking. He's just saying, I am here. I'm here. I'm here. Hmm. I don't know why I can't hear him. That's weird. But uh, no, I mean this this book is uh it's pretty cool in the sense that it um mm -hmm. it's the introduction of a, a whole um, universe of characters. Yeah, and it's kind of like you need to um, if you want to really get the 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 birth mm -hmm. and the breath of this entire universe, uh, the this this number one issue is going to be. And now you you're, you're talking April. about you talking about the number one issue of the Canadian Shield. Yes. Of, okay, got it. Okay. Yeah. Rick, Nate, right now, I'm like. Now Rick I'm says that um, at some two. point. Um, <laughs> Rick started Shield, talking and you started talking over him because you can't hear him. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize, Rick. I don't no know problem. why it's not picking up. Now I, on here on the screen, it's saying that. Uh, I'll go out. Oh, John, tell him I'll go out and come back in. Uh, Jiminy, he says he's going to drop out and come back in real quick. Okay. But. Um, okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah no. I, I mean, in. I I do have a I do have a whole other story I've written up for the Buckler, but I'm here talking about the Canadian Shield. Yeah, but um, <laughs> Rick told me that that you're planning on having the Canadian Shield fight the Buckler in your in your ash can or no. no. No, 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 no. Okay, maybe he was talking about the, the 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 two of them meeting. Okay. Yeah, they meet. Yeah. Okay, got it. Rick got is it. Rick is uh, being a, a a pal, and he's letting me borrow the Canadian Shield. I could put him in the book a, a couple of times. Yeah, that's awesome. That's very yeah. cool. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm looking I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing seeing uh, the work you guys put out in terms of uh, these books. So sounds very interesting. Yeah, it should be fun. Yeah. And uh, the thing is, like, and and his book is geared way more, like, way different than mine. Mm -hmm. Like, I like, I like dark comedies. I mm -hmm. like, I like villains. Right. I like, I like villains that talk mm -hmm. big. Right. Uh, Rick says he, he's back. Okay, let me put him back in. <laughs> um, but I like, you know, I like, I like Mephisto. I like Doom. Yep. Rick, you hear me? I can hear you. You okay? I can hear you now. Okay, great. Thanks. Sorry about that. I apologize. And I can, and I can hear the both of you. 
Good. Awesome. <laughs> I am cast. <laughs> he says in the chat. <laughs> I hit the letter, as you can obviously tell. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize it until after I hit the enter button. Uh, yeah. So the thing is, like, I I really like villains, and I like to see the I like villains that talk big. I like villains that make grand entrances, that break open walls, and, and come in. Even the door's right there. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. No, I got you. <laughs> now let me let me ask you, John. Did you, have you seen the the new Dracula thing from uh, Netflix? No, I haven't. I don't. I don't it, really keep up on a lot of stuff. Okay. If you have a chance, if you have a chance, you should check it out because it, it, the way they portray him in this in this in this miniseries, I think you would like because he he they gave him a, like a real kind of good sense of humor. It's that like a dark sense of humor, and okay. and he, and he's constantly sort of cracking jokes right before like he eats people. <laughs> like, what is it? What is it called actually? It's called Dracula. It's just called Dracula. It's just called Dracula. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, if you if you Google it, just type in Dracula twenty twenty. Um, I can that, Google it, or I gotta look it up on Netflix. Oh, if you have Netflix, you, yeah, yeah, look it up on Netflix. Just type in Dracula. Yeah, that's it. I mean, one second here. I watch I watch most of my media on my phone. Okay. Oh, really? Oh man, I can't do that. My because like, I I only get to watch maybe like in you know thirty minutes to an hour, so I'll, I'll usually be laying down in bed and have the phone sitting in its charger. Uh, <laughs> uh, got it. My eyes are are way too uh, sensitive, too weak to uh, to look at that stuff. That small. I'm I'm young and virile. I have beautiful, brilliant, good working eyes. Uh, you're lucky. I have old man eyes. All right. Let's see here. Search for Dracula. Dracula. All right. Um, Hmm. Is it starring Clay's Bang, Donnie Wells, yes. John yeah. Heffernan? That's it. And it's uh, one season so far? Is, yep, it's only one season. Yeah. Three episodes. Yeah. Oh, they're nice long episodes. I like that. Yeah. Like an hour and a half each? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I will give us a look. Check it out. I should be done with the first episode uh, Saturday. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, usually when I watch anything like that, I mean, I'll, I'll watch maybe half an hour and then I'll come back like, you know, next day or two days later, watch another half an hour. And Well, the thing is, I don't really have a lot of time to watch new right. things unless they come highly recommended by somebody. Right. Yeah. And um, I don't really try to even like search out new things unless they're already part of the mm -hmm. unless they're already a cultural touchstone, you know, like right. something that I would need to have seen in order to remain relevant in conversations with people. <laughs> Yeah, like Twilight. Like Twilight. Right, right. Twilight. <laughs> uh, Frozen. I had to force myself to watch Frozen so that I could speak. Frozen on was it. good. I love Frozen. I did not like it at all. What? Yeah, oh, God. I didn't. I didn't. I'm not, and I'm not trying to be a tough guy because I am a Disney fanatic. I love sissy girl movies. I love them. <laughs> so why didn't, you, why, why didn't you like Frozen? It, it just didn't make any sense. Well, it's a Disney movie. <laughs> yeah, but there, there are, uh, you know, not not counting sequels, but a lot Dang, of Disney movies sense. are pretty good. They make sense. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't know about that. They make sense. I, I enjoy them, but I, I don't watch them because they make sense. It's just like, eh, the animation's good. So, um, But I enjoyed Frozen. I think, um, I don't know if it was the songs or what, but it just like really, I don't know. I, I like the whole sisterly bond thing i thought yeah I, but the uh, thing is i didn't like the the song i, I mean do you want to build a snowman yeah so, i mean it's a, not, it, it has it's, it's it has it's, breaks in the in the tempo yeah it a lot of it doesn't rhyme right it doesn't flow well, it, flow a it, it, it interrupts itself it's not okay. a good song <laughs> i don't get it why people are like oh i love this song. now let it go is a very good song yeah um you know, but I mean, not, one song is not going to save a movie. But I don't. I don't know. I mean, I, I can't. Think, I can't think. You know, maybe, I, maybe I'm a little bit uh, um, spoiled because I grew up during the golden age of Disney. You little fussy. You little fussy. Um, <laughs> well, not, not the golden age. The, the Disney Renaissance. 
Um, when was that? Are you talking about Little Mermaid? Yes. Okay. Little Mermaid through, I think it was, I don't know, Treasure yeah. Island or something. Treasure Island, uh, no. Um, Whatever that was, Treasure Planet. Oh, no. But, you know, I, I, I grew up with the Beauty and the Beast, you know. Pocahontas. Yeah. Pocahontas, uh, yeah. Little Mermaid. Princess and the Frog. Uh, that movie wasn't that bad, actually. I like that movie. It was okay. It wasn't. It wasn't great. Yeah, uh, almost there is a very good song. I like that song a lot. Every other song in there mm. is mediocre. Mm. The uh, the voodoo ladies, her song was okay, but I can't even remember her name or how the song goes. I just remember <laughs> that I kind of enjoyed it. Okay. Yeah. Um, Frozen Two, you will like even less then. Um, okay. As one great song, <laughs> as, as one phenomenal song in that movie. But some of the other songs, I, I was, I, I watched it with my wife, and I was, I was singing, singing next to her, and it was particularly during this one song. It was, it was a complete riff on like bad, like late seventies, early eighties, like ballads, and I, we were just looking at each other like. What are, what are they doing? It, it was it was, it was Wait so. A minute. What what the heck is a late seventies ballad? Um, you know, like uh, um, you talking about that, like you talking about like rock ballads, like White Snake or something? No, like something like like America would would have sung. You know, um, or even ABBA. You know, so, something like really kind of um, like a Dancing Queen. Not even uh, no. It's just like it's just like really like a swarmy. God, it's hard to describe. Watch it. It's 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 a it's a good movie, but the songs leave much to be desired. Um, well, the thing is, like I I can deal with a movie that has no songs or very little songs. Right. Yeah. As long as the movie's solid, but if you're telling me the movie's trash and the songs no, are trash, no, 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 no. The, the movie's good. No, the movie is good. It's a like song, uh, it's oh, you know what I really love? I really like that movie Brave. I did too. I thought, and I it only had one song. I think that that song in the in the beginning. Uh, I don't remember when she's riding the horse and said, "Let it run, let it rise, spread your wings and touch the sky." And okay. that was it. Okay. That was, and it wasn't even her singing it. It was just background music, you know. Right. Yeah. 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 Because that yeah. song, I don't think it had any any musicals in it. But I loved that movie. It was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Frozen Two was a good movie. But um, but but some of the songs are almost painful to listen to. Um, but the story is very good. I enjoy the story, but but it's not as good as Frozen. The story. So. Okay. Well, the Frozen story wasn't very. <laughs> oh my! You you are a very picky man. <laughs> I am. I mean, look, you spend a hundred and thirty million dollars making a movie. You have a, an entire. You know, you have an entire cast of people that are there researching the movie, that are working on the, the artworks, you know, all this stuff. All right. The movie's got to, you know, you got to catch these things a little bit. They got to make a little bit of sense, you know? Yeah, but uh, I don't know. I I, 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 don't know. I think you're being a little hard on Frozen. I, I thought it was a pretty solid movie. Um, I, I think a lot of movies that I I came out of the movie and I was just like... Hey, how's it going? Pablo, Pablo Romero is here. Oh, hey, Pablo Romero. How you doing? Uh, Pablo... Um, like when I saw um, the last Thor movie, I was like mad. Oh, I loved it. It was so. Oh good. my gosh! I saw when I saw it, I was just like, oh, oh they, they why they do the Thor? They ruined them. Um, and that movie was so good. I'm actually looking forward to Love and Thunder. <laughs> I, 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 I refuse to see the next Thor movie. I'm like. When when that when uh, I can't remember the name of it. What was it called? It was called uh, Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Yeah. When 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 the when the lights came on and uh, I was just like, no, I'm done, I'm done. I I, I saw um, Infinity War and Endgame, and after that I was like, I'm done with Marvel movies. No, <laughs> like I was watching um, a, a critic uh -huh. um, on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, he calls himself the critical drinker. You ever you ever seen him? Um, I've heard have I? I've heard of him. The name's familiar, but I can't, I, I can't recall him offhand. Anyway, go ahead. Well, he was he he actually put it really succinctly, mm -hmm. and it had the exact same reaction that I had, mm -hmm. which was, he said that when he watched Endgame, mm -hmm. he, he thought it was really good, mm -hmm. um, but he felt like 
the, the sensation that he had when he finished mm -hmm. watching the whole, you know, the whole thing that we've all been going through this whole Marvel Cinematic Universe timeline, right, was relief mm -hmm. that they were actually able to get the last movie out with the very minimal amount of interference and and ruining and stuff like mm -hmm. that, and they actually got the complete story out, and right. it was a good decent story that you could mm -hmm. probably watch again. Right. And I was like, that's true. It, I did feel relief because I was so worried the movie was going to bomb. Right. Yeah. And be uh, just awful, awful, you know? And yeah. No, I, I, I will say he's after a month of being online, he's catching up with the interwebs. He's been offline for a month. Yeah. I've, I, I've noticed I haven't seen any bucks and women um, on Twitter lately. So <laughs> I know I was going to start drawing my own stuff just so I can yeah. get my, get my jollies. <laughs> Oh man. So um but yeah, I mean that that I, I I saw I saw the death of Stan Lee as being sort of the death of Marvel and the death of uh the MCU. Because all, all the movies that are coming out, they except for Black Widow. Black that's when I saw the trailer for Black Widow, that got me excited for a Marvel movie again. But everything else, the Eternals, um, Thor Love and Thunder, the new Doctor Strange movie, none of them interest me. What about the uh, Disney Plus TV shows? What about that, them? Uh, they, did have, <laughs> they, they did have a thing for a trailer for that during the football game. Oh, oh right, the um, the Scarlet Witch and uh, the 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 Bucky and uh, Falcon Loki. show. Yeah. Oh, and Loki. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I I might I might watch them. I mean, I'm not I'm not gonna get Disney Plus to watch them, but um. Well, luckily for me, my wife made that decision for me, and I do have Disney Plus on my phone. <laughs> oh, okay. cool. Because she really, really wanted her to watch her uh, her Simpsons. Oh, the Simpsons are on uh, Disney Plus now. And I, I'm I'm not gonna lie, I've been binge watching. I thought that I I thought that I was a Simpsons connoisseur. There, I'm I'm looking at episodes from like seasons four uh -huh. through like seven episodes right. I've never seen before. Yeah, well, it's been so long ago. That's like what 1991. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, like, I I mean, Simpsons have been running almost as long as you've been alive, John. Well, duh, Rick. That's yeah, what I'm so. saying. Like there, there. But the thing is, I've watched so many Simpsons episodes. Yeah, I thought that I I seen them all up until about season 13. You know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. but I, there's a bunch of old ones that I've never seen. Yeah, yeah. Now I don't know about because the thing was like, yeah, you know, when I was younger. Not only were the Simpsons on, you know, a new Simpsons episode every week, but they would every weekday they were playing a rerun of an older one, you know? Right. And I was yeah. I was whew, I was all about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Now it ain't uh, no Futurama, but I love me some Simpsons. Yeah. Uh, hold on one second. I'm watching I'll be right back. All right. So Pablo, what's uh what's on the what's on the docket for you? What do you what do you have underneath your hands? On your drawing table, what are you going to be working on? And what are you working on, Rick? Me? What am I working on? Yeah, what are you working on? Canadian Shield number two. This How's that campaign going? <laughs> um, number one, getting it out. Hopefully, getting more and more people to participate in uh, the contest of doing their own version of the Canadian Shield and uh, putting it out there. Well, I think that contest needs to be, uh, you know, put on the back Pardon? burner. It, it, that contest can't take priority over getting this book funded and advertised. Yeah. Well, what What am I working on? You say I'm working on a uh, a shelving system for the shed that I just built. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, but my hands are cramping up, and you know, you, you, my trigger finger for the for the drill. It's just shot, and this is my main drawing finger, so I don't know if I should go out there today and work on it or let it rest and actually work on some drawing because my that my finger, that joint right here, gets so, like, inflamed that I, it's difficult to draw. Yeah. Draw first. <laughs> Shed second. <laughs> well, I got to I gotta fight... I got to fight the daylight. I got to fight the sundown. I got to get that shed done before the sun goes down. We need the buckler done. <laughs> You need oh, gonna get it done. <laughs> It'll get done. Don't don't you worry your pretty little your pretty little long goldie locks over that. You need to buckle down and drill on. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna have any puns whatsoever in the book. 
I don't think there's any puns in the Canadian Shield number one either. I saved those for Insecto. Good. You should also save Insecto for somebody else because I'm not drawing anything that's going to have puns in it. Well, you won't know. You just drive me out. <laughs> oh, I'll know everything. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't throw my hat into anywhere until I know exactly what's going on with everybody involved. <laughs> well, I know you said that you'd like to draw Insecto. Have you read the first script yet or not? Nope. You do know you have access to it, right? You do know that you have told me before that it's like five years away. <laughs> <laughs> now, Insecto, if there, Insecto would be like in the if things go right, would be like a fourth campaign at best. At best? What about at worst? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> at worst, it depends on how well, how well these this campaign does. Well, hopefully it will fulfill before the rest of the time is up. You have, what, 26 yeah. days left? 27? 26 days at this point. Okay, cool. So, yeah, uh, right now, as I was saying earlier, I, I am meeting Shield number two on my channel Tuesday through Thursday. So, so that's a day? Part of it. Were you doing that today? No, today was uh, my fan art contest. Uh, was, oh, it's Monday today. My, yeah. I get I get confused because I don't work like a on the regular work. My work week starts on sun, Saturday morning. <laughs> I was drawing up my character Win today, who appears in Insecto number eleven for the first time. Oh my god! So for like five years. <laughs> Hopefully not that long. <laughs> oh, I'm looking something up. Give me a second. But as you said, you like the fact that I've got things sort of planned out for quite some time, John. Rick, don't confuse with things that I say to help promote your campaign to my actual feelings, okay? <laughs> <laughs> don't be trying to call me out on it live on air. Either. Where Jiminy this guy? <laughs> You, you you can talk to each other. I'm looking something up real quick. Yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm just trying to ink without screwing up. Oh, too late. Uh, <laughs> so, what would you place from Dust Till Dawn on the hierarchy of vampire movies? From Dust Till Dawn, um. Hmm. I'm trying to think of how to how to place it. I mean, I'll say a one to ten. I'd probably give it a. I don't know. I give it a seven. It's a good movie, but it's not. I I I wouldn't say it's one of the best vampire movies I've seen. It's um, and that's mainly because of some Hayek. <laughs> so uh, I think I'm biased. I um. Now what's the what's the what's the old dude's name? The the black guy, the what the military man, the mm. one that had that uh, that nervous breakdown or that not nervous breakdown, but he started getting like some PTSD in the middle of a speech. <laughs> in in which movie? In from dusk till dawn. Remember he says, "I, I can't take. I I don't know if I can take it." And then the, that black dude lights a cigar. He's like, "You can take it because you got no choice." I was oh. in Nam. <laughs> he starts talking about like being in Nam Dude. and like killing a whole like. Village of people in their sleep. <laughs> it's been, you know what? I haven't, I haven't seen that movie since it came out in the theater. So I am like, I don't. I I'm trying to think of who that, who that is. I remember, there was two guys. One of them was Sex Machine, who had the pistol on his crotch, which was unforgettable. Right. And then the other dude, the big buff. Uh, I think it was a football player. Might have been. Uh, God, what was his name? I gotta find out his name now. Just till dawn. That yeah, he had like the best monologue. <laughs> Being in Nam. Then that came out in '96. Holy mackerel! Wow. Sheesh. 
It doesn't seem that long ago. <laughs> you know you're getting old when, uh, you know. I don't even know why I know that movie because I was like, what, 96? I was 11 years old when that movie came out and I saw it in theaters. <laughs> yeah, but um, I mean, maybe you've seen it since then on TV. <laughs> I, I haven't. It's just uh, it's been a long time. Okay, yeah, his name is Fred Williamson. He's also oh, known. Williamson. He's also known as the Hammer, as an American actor and former professional American football defensive back. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't remember that scene now from the movie. Hmm. Oh, it's such a good scene. And then it, like cuts away from him to show somebody like turning into a vampire, but he's still in the background, like making gestures, like he's stabbing people in the neck. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, so good. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I I like from Dust to Dawn, um, but it wasn't it was definitely wasn't my favorite vampire movie. I mean, I really liked Three Days of Night. I thought that was great. I'll be honest, I have never seen Thirty Days of Night. Really, watch it. Yeah. It's an excellent vampire movie. I keep movie. hearing that, but I've just I don't think it's anywhere that I can watch it for free, so I haven't put oh. the trigger on it yet. It's not on Netflix. I don't huh. think so. No. Oh. Um, yeah. yeah. If you have a if you, if you ever have a chance, check it out. Um, What's another really good one? I, I really liked, um, and Nasser doesn't doesn't agree, but um, I really liked Salem's Lot, the um, the miniseries from the nineteen seventies. Okay. Yeah. Um, I thought that was very good. Um, but I like vampire movies that are either very very serious or mm -hmm. super hokey. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're 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 fun characters. I mean, like, uh, and we were also talking about. Um, Fright Night, the original one with Roddy McDowell. I like that one. Thought that was good. Um, or like, remember in in Lost Boys Part Two? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. When, Lost Boys when, was good. When uh, and the Part Two is kind of trash, but uh, I didn't see Part Two. I saw the first one. The best, the best quote from any vampire movie was in Part Two, and mm -hmm. it was Corey Feldman, where it, there's a there's a beach party going on in Tom Savini's backyard. <laughs> Okay. And he, he kicks everybody out, you know. Hey, you can't be here partying in my in my private beach, you know. And mm -hmm. all the kid, all the teens are vampires, you know. Uh -huh. And they're gonna eat them. But uh -huh. then uh, Corey Feldman shows up in all of his vampire hunting gear. Okay. And he chases away. He, he the, the guy gets a chance to run away. Tom Savini, you know. <laughs> and uh, and the guy turns around and says, "You just cost us our lunch or our dinner or something." And then he pulls out from his vest like two wooden sticks. Says, "Don't worry, boys. Stakes are on me." <laughs> Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> that's so good. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of Corey. The Corys. The Corys are kind of cringe worthy for me. I don't I don't even I, I've never even watched any movie with the other Corey in it. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Well I'm they're they're from my I guess my generation. Yeah, I think um, that I kind of missed that. I was a little yeah. bit too young for that. Yeah. Um, you know, they were they were kind of big back in the eighties. Um and then they started just falling apart for you know for various reasons, but um, yeah, I mean I, I watch their movies now and it's just like ah, I mean they they made some good movies like um what was it the werewolf one um Silver Bullet, with uh with Corey Hames it was very I good. I, I don't think I've seen that. It's a Stephen King uh, movie. Dude, um, I have a problem with Stephen. I don't think that Stephen King's books translate to movies very well. Really? Yeah. I think, there's, there's, I think there's like maybe something I, I can count on maybe one hand the uh -huh. books that have that are or Stephen King movies that I've actually liked. Really? Huh? Yeah. I, I think it really depends on on the director who makes it. Um, some of his, like I really, I thought that, like like again Salem's Lot, the the miniseries from mm. the 1970s, I thought it was really good. It, very scary, but. They changed. They changed it from the Stephen King novel. Um, they they remade Salem's Lot in in the early two thousands, which was much more faithful to the original novel. But I I didn't think it was as strong as as the, as the one where they changed it. At the same time, though, they changed Stephen King's Shining when when uh, Jack Nicholson made it. Um, and I thought that was right. that. I didn't think that was as good as the yeah, I'm, and that's and people people look at me like I'm like I like I'm a jerk because like I I'll tell them I uh, wasn't the biggest fan of The Shining. Right, it was kind of confusing. It's weird. It was a weird yeah. movie, and I was like, "What is this? Is it magic?" Yeah, right. <laughs> they didn't explain a lot of things in that movie, um, so you know I, I understand you're you're not 
you know really liking it that much i when i i've seen it a few times and and even sort of knowing what's going on it, it's confusing <laughs> and yeah. so it's it's like i i don't know how 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 much it can appeal to people who are going into a cold not knowing the story ahead of time you know right 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 and like i think it's because it's it's maybe like some sort of a cinematic tour de force i'm not a movie critic i don't know anything about you know right the, yeah the idiosyncrasies of how to how to critique a movie so maybe yeah. it is a fantastic film but it for me yeah. i'm at the layman and it's I, all i didn't like it that much yeah it's, it's i hated all... i hated the stand oh my god I, I couldn't even get it took me like six wow. sittings to get through it you mean the miniseries <laughs> yeah um i i kind of enjoyed it um it just took a while for for me to get into it um so I, again i i well, I'm trying to think of a Stephen King movie that I really liked. Um, I really liked. Like, I would say the only movie that, like, to me, was like an epic one of those movies, like a perfect movie. Mm -hmm. Is the Shawshank Redemption? Oh, that was a great movie. I yeah, love that fan, movie. Beautiful. I thought fantastic. the Green Mile was very good. I didn't like um, that. <laughs> you didn't like that? Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, okay. Um, I thought I liked. Um, I like Christine. That was okay. Did you like Did you like Cujo? I did like Cujo. I did. I thought, it was, I thought Cujo was okay. I thought it was good. Um, I I thought the um, what is it the 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 mist was good. Um, I, I, I got I, the I, mist and the fog mixed up. Which one is that? Well, the mist is the one where they're all trapped in the in the supermarket. Um, the okay. Fog... I haven't seen that. Oh, you haven't seen it. Check yeah, it out. and everybody everybody keeps telling me, "Oh, it's so good. Check it out. If you love zombie movies, if you love this, you're gonna love it." You know. Yeah, it's, there are no zombies in it, but um. Well, I know that, but I guess it's the same type of principle, like yeah. a bunch creep of people. show. Pablo Romero says creep show. Was that Stephen King? Yeah. It was yes, it okay. Was. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Creep show was very good. Mm hmm. So um, yeah, I think it, I think it just depends um on who on who's making the film. I mean, it's, I, I almost see it almost like Harry Potter. I, I mean, I love the Harry Potter novels, but the movies are kind of garbage. But depending on who's directing the movie, it can be very, it can be pretty good. Like, um, I hate the first two Harry Potter movies, but the third one, directed by um, Alphonse Corazon, is that how you pronounce it? What did you? Because uh, to I me, I, heard... didn't, I don't think the Harry Potter movies got good until they changed Dumbledore. Um, well, I think that was the third movie. Was it okay? Yeah, yeah. Because when they got Gambon as Dumbledore, mm -hmm. like the whole dynamic changed. Then I was because I was because you know Harry Potter came out. I was already an adult. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, this is cool. I, I read all the books. Mm -hmm. Um, I know I didn't read all the books until um a couple of months before the last movie was going to come out. Oh really? Okay. Because I started watching the movies first. Uh huh. I was like, oh, this is really good. And then uh, books are a lot better. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> that, that, that's why I kind of didn't like the movies because I saw I read the books first, and then when the movies came out, I I, I kept on thinking during the movies like they left out all the good parts, <laughs> like all the parts where Harry Potter's getting the heck beat out of him. He ends up in a hospital because his arms like twisted in fifteen different places. They left all that all that cool gory stuff out. Yeah, so, yeah. I was like, oh man. But like, the thing was, like, I, I saw it. I was like, okay, well, I always pictured. Um, Dumbledore mm -hmm. as right. a Michael Gambon character. Right. I don't even know who the first guy was, that rickety old guy that died. That's Richard Harris. Yeah, he was just too too old. Um, yeah, but Dumbledore was supposed to be old, so it, it didn't bother me. I, I just felt bad because it was obvious that he was towards the end of his life, you know, because he, he was he was so old that um, you know, even his voice was like, Harry, I watch out for Voldemort, he's around here somewhere. And he wasn't acting. That was actually his real voice. It was like, uh, oh, oh, was man. it? That makes me sad. Yeah, I know. That's what, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'm like, oh, man, you're, you're, you're like 15 minutes from the grave. <laughs> I hope I hope he can make it through all six uh, movies. It's like, uh, he couldn't. But, um, but he, you know, he did, he did a good job, you know, while he, while he was here with us. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. No, I think it was for the best though. Like when he, uh, not that he died, but you know, but the yeah, right, but, yeah, right. Because uh, I, you know, I, I couldn't picture, especially uh, getting towards the last books where Dumbledore is actually getting a lot more active before he, you know, before right. he passes. Like yeah. I wouldn't be able to see <laughs> the other yeah. one doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. 
A lot of. And then when he that. when Michael Gambon was Dumbledore, I, like I was like, oh, I, then I then I, that actually um, in the movies anyway that that mm-hmm. that's what actually sparked my imagination. Like, oh, I wish that I was at Hogwarts. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I never had that until it was. Yeah, he was a very that. like he was a very likable Dumbledore. I mean, he he made you want him to be your mentor. You know, you right, sort of right, right. yeah, you have someone you you could see. It's like, oh man, it'd be cool to like hang out with and yeah. You know, Oh, so. was it? Uh, Pablo says that Stand By Me was also Stephen King. I didn't know. Oh, okay, cool. I, I like Stand By Me. Yeah, that's a good movie. Misery, great movie. Very good. I never saw Thinner. I've seen it on TV, but I've never watched the whole thing. Oh, I did like, I did like, that's with John Lithgow, right? Thinner? No. Um, I'm trying to think who was the guy, who was the main guy in Thinner. I can't remember his name. It was not John Lithgow, though. Um, I'm trying. I'm trying to understand what Michael Layton um, is saying. He says, "I'm calling it now that the author will be female, like J.K. Rowling, but probably black, and Annie will be a transgender female." What does that mean? What's he referring to? Uh, I don't know. You talking about misery? I don't understand. Uh, and then back. Okay. When wasn't where you were going? <laughs> well, <let's laughs> back. Oh, they're, Did they're, you see me type BRB in the chat? They're doing they're doing a misery remake. <coughs> oh, is that what he's talking about? I guess so. It, that was a fantastic movie. Oh no, yeah, he does. Yeah, he says they're make, remaking misery. Why are they remaking misery? That's stupid. It's a great movie as it, as it was. Yeah, you can. Ooh, who are they gonna? What are they gonna do? Get Melissa McCarthy to replace Kathy Bates? Well, he says that that uh, the, that they're going to make the the author female, um, but probably black, and Annie will be a transgender female. That's what he's guessing. But I'm guessing if they make the author female, they're going to make the 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 um this Annie. They're going to make him make her Andy, make make her a man, and have it be about toxic masculinity. Uh huh. If they do that, that sounds uh, like something I don't want any part of. <laughs> yeah, me either. It'll probably make uh, even less money than uh, Birds of Prey. Oh, I had heard that uh, Birds of Prey wasn't doing good. Yeah, what, it, what did fell, it actually? What did it actually bring in over the weekend? Apparently, it made thirty-three million dollars this weekend, and, and it was supposed to make between forty-five and sixty million. So it made Is it that made, bad, like thirty-three. Thirty-three million. Yeah, that's. What that's was the budget bad. for the movie? The budget for the movie was six was eighty-five million. Woo! Okay, yeah, I did bad. And uh, <laughs> you know, it, you know, the advertising is is, tw- is twice that amount. So the, you know, advertising and the actual movie cost the movie cost about one hundred seventy million altogether. Yeah. So uh, you're, then, you're, ta- you're talking birds of prey, right? Yeah, birds of prey. You're right. Yeah. Golly. Uh, is there any actual Bird to Prey member in that film? Yeah, but they're unrecognizable. That's the problem. Who? They're unrecognizable. Unre- oh yeah. Yeah, I saw what they did to Cassandra Kane. What was the, they they yeah. rose Tico to Cassandra Kane. <laughs> exactly. They, 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 one she's not she's not an assassin. They just made her into a chubby Asian girl. You know? And uh Black Widow, I mean sorry, Black Black Canary is black. <laughs> it's like they, they, they didn't realize that the black in her name doesn't refer to her skin color. Um, so they said, ah, let's hire a black girl. Um, who else is it? Huntress is unrecognizable. They have um, Rosie Perez playing, um, what's her face? Um, is that who that is? Yeah. Oh, She's playing um, Renee Montoya. That's Tarantula, right? Or what is it? Wait a minute. Yeah. Tarantula. What are you talking about? Huh? Isn't Montoya part of a gang? No, no, no. My no, the name is, is I can't tell you is was once a cop, and she she's come to question. She's yeah, she's a cop. Well, who's the okay? Who who am I thinking about then? Who's the leader of the Tarantula Gang? Tarantula. I don't know what the Tarantula Gang is. I'm not familiar with it. It's a spider themed gang in the Batman universe. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, again, I'm not familiar with it. They, are they associated with Birds of Prey? And she's a Hispanic. Okay. I think they do, yeah. Let me, look, let me look it up. 
Yeah, look it up. As far as I know, Renee Montoya is, is a is a cop for the for uh, Gotham City, and she ends up taking over for the question at some point. Okay, I, I did see that. Yeah, that, well, that was before the new Fifty Two. Okay, I'm thinking of Catalina Flores. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> All those Hispanics so, sound like. Basically, um, they made the head of the bird the prey, Harley Quinn, and it's supposed to be like Oracle, aka one black girl. Either that or uh, it's a mess. Or, or what's uh, Black Canary. So. Yeah. It's nothing, sort of, it's worse than the TV interpretation of the Birds of Prey. It is. It's like really bad. And none of them are in costume. None of them, none of them have a uniform. But it would be forgivable if uh, they were better than the, than the comic versions. Better, but. <laughs> yep, yep, I said it. But they're not. <laughs> but they're not. Because I'm going to be honest, there's some comic characters that are trash. Yeah, yeah, I know. But, but yeah, tra trash comic book characters usually don't get movies made about them. You know, it has to be some sort of. What are you talking about? Four of them did just now. They're not trash comic book characters. I mean, they're pretty cool. I mean, if, if they just needed to do them right. They're I mean, that's right. they're all right characters. Yeah. The only one that's like actually kind of cool is Black Canary. Black Canary's cool. I thought. I thought if they did Huntress right, she'd be cool. Um, and these are a lot of these characters were done in, in Arrow, and they were done be better. The TV series Arrow. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's not like they they had to start from scratch. I mean, it was pretty. I don't know. It's pretty much handed to them, and they just screwed the pooch. It's terrible. That's a vulgar expression. Is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess yeah, you. Think Huntress, was a, Huntress was an Arrow. They did her way better. Mm -hmm. Black Canary was obviously in the Arrow and did her way better. Oh, yeah. Michael Lay Lathan says worldwide it made like eighty million. That's awful. Like worldwide, it just yeah. barely caught up to the like broke even. No, it didn't even break even. It didn't even break even because um, in order to break even, it would have to make twice as much as that because. Um, well, I thought they didn't spend that much on marketing, though. Didn't no they? marketing is spent about eighty-five million as well. Oh, and and and, and not the, like uh, not like the minions where like the movie cost like what seventy million to make, and they spent like eight hundred million in advertising. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that movie did gangbusters though at the box office. Yeah, but um, the the studio only gets half of the ticket sales. So if if if, if it makes say three hundred three hundred million at the box office. Warner Brothers only gets 150 million of that, so the, re the rest goes to the actual theaters. Mm, I don't know if that's true. Yeah, generally it is. The theaters get get 50 percent of the cut, and then the, and then the actual studios get 50 percent. Because so I know I know like Edwards Edwards Cinemas uh -huh. has a deal where they get the movie um, for free. But they get, I think, only like five percent of the sales. Okay. And that's why that's why they charge so much for the concessions. Because <laughs> they're making it all up. Yeah, Edwards Ed, Edward Cinemas, which, which which I've never heard of them. Uh, it's a big it's a big uh, movie theater chain in okay. California. Okay. I think it's oh. the biggest in California. Yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. Bigger than uh, Cinemark and. Uh... Yeah, Cinemark, really? Harkins, yeah. Uh, a, wow. you know, AMC movies. That kind of, yeah, it's all. It's the huh. the. I think the most. We I think we have a. Shh, we have a ton of them over here. Mm -hmm. Wow. <coughs> so you're you're in California. I am. Yeah. Okay. Cool. What part? Southern California, Riverside. Okay. Very cool. By the river. Yeah. <laughs> <In a> man. <laughs> Speaking of the van, look at this Buckler van. Damn it. Look at that, Jiminy. Eat your heart out. That is cool. And hey, it has the, this piece This piece right here on top. You got to look too high and jump. We can't see. This is retractable. And uh, because you can stand up here and you can aim your, your – you can aim this gun mm -hmm. and sweep the streets. And if you don't want to, you can take that off. Mm -hmm. 
and you can actually cover it up with a canvas top like that. Mm. <laughs> cool. I love it because JP made this and he put a bunch of little extra stuff on it, like little horns and uh, a bunch of little places to clip on, like ropes and stuff, and little an axe over here and a okay. shovel. <laughs> Who's JP? Uh, JP Four. He's a he's a model maker YouTuber. Okay. Well, he's mainly uh, he's on Twitch now. He was on YouTube, but he's still around. He watches shows on uh. YouTube stuff. See, Michael Layton says, I'd like to see a Joker sequel set pretty much completely in Arkham Asylum, like one flew over the cuckoo's nest and even uh, cast Jack Nicholson. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was a cool. great movie. Yeah. That would be cool. I want my cigarettes. <laughs> Stupid Cheswick. That movie was super depressing. Yeah. I see Claudio Zamorano says, yep, like 60% of the initial box office goes to the studio and then 40% of the ladder mm -hmm. something else. Ladder boat? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Or 40% of the ladder, maybe two? Oh, no, maybe it's no. 40% of the ladder, no. I'm trying to find out what's next to B on the, on the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to decipher. No, and I think that's probably one of the best part to me of the Joker movie was yeah. the very end where he's talking to a lady and then you don't really know what's going on, but then you see him walking out down the aisle and he has like blood on his feet and the footprints are all in blood and then he just runs away from the, the orderlies. <laughs> that okay. was so good. I was like, oh. Oh, he says B-O equals box office. Oh, there you go. Ah, uh, gotcha. I still haven't seen Joker. Oh, okay. I, I saw it. Did you like it? Was it? All right. It was all right. It was to me. It didn't live up to the hype, but you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. they have to. They have to up so much. It's probably hard for it to do. You know. Yeah, you know, but it was probably better. I'd say it's still better than Captain Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> That's I still hard. haven't seen Captain Marvel. Yeah, you're fortunate. It's a terrible movie. And I hear that I don't have to, so I guess I won't. I won't have to. You do not have to watch. It's garbage. It has it has no real ties to uh, to the uh, MCU outside of just letting you know that she exists. You know. Yeah, I didn't like. Uh, I I didn't. I got really tired of listening to the uh, mm -hmm. all the YouTubers talking trash on Captain Marvel, mm -hmm. so I didn't listen. After about yeah. the first week, I just stopped. Like I wasn't clicking on any more videos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then I watched her in Endgame, and I was mm -hmm. like, I already don't like her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like she shows up and she says, "You got something for me?" Like, like I was like, "What? Yeah. What?" This obnoxious character. And then when uh, when Thanos punched her out of the movie, everyone was like cheering. <laughs> it's like it's like cheering the bad guy to like punch this obnoxious woman like out of the no, but it was stupid. Screen. It was like she shows up and she's like just overpowers Thanos so that he has to like right. pull out a, a, a stone just to actually get her off of him. Mm -hmm. yeah, all yeah. right, um, maybe maybe you should have made her the star of everything. You know? Yeah. Well, that's I think that was, that that was her plan. But uh, and actually, I heard that they filmed two different endings for the movie. Um, you know, one where she defeats Thanos, and another one where obviously Tony Stark does. And uh, they realized after uh, all the brouhaha about how obnoxious she was that uh, it's probably better to have Tony Stark defeat Thanos than just having her walk in and steal everyone's. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, you could have got. Tom Hanks to play the most beloved, uh, right. relatable superhero in the world. Mr. Rogers, right. Mr. Rogers, you know, and he, Tom Hanks would come in as Mr. Rogers. And the fact is, mm -hmm. you haven't put in the time. I've invested years watching this Marvel Cinematic Universe. Right. Nobody's going to take this victory away from Cap and, and, and Stark. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> no, seriously. 
You know, I got you too know? much invested in Captain America and Tony Stark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody's gonna be coming in still in Thunder. All right, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's exactly right. So they made the right decision. Yeah, but yeah, but the, when it comes to the Joker, I thought that it had a lot of potential, but it fell. It fell on really? its face. Yeah, I did. Huh. Um, I enjoyed a lot of it. Like mm -hmm. the first five minutes mm -hmm. is probably one of the most beautifully shot movies I've ever seen. Oh, wow. Hmm. Um, everything had this, this uh, very visceral feel to everything. Mm hmm you could you could feel the streets you could taste the the air you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah um and they kind of like gave up on that after five minutes they're like okay we can't blow our entire budget making this movie beautiful we got to get get to the actual story you know right and i was like okay and then when he when he when he finally and i guess here's the thing i'm not sure i'm not sure they're that self-aware mm -hmm. but when they made the joker kind of come out of his shell right as it were and he became yeah. very charismatic Right. They made him super homosexual. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, he, he he picked up a lisp and all that. You know, all that. Well, I mean, now, even in the but comic and this, books, he's kind of, you know, a lot. Half the time, they 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 portray him as being kind of fey, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but I don't know if this is what, um, I like I said, I don't know if they're that self aware, but like when you get somebody who's a super loser. Mm -hmm. Like I, I know a couple of people who are very, very introverted, mm -hmm. <laughs> and when they try to, <laughs> Rick, Rick conveniently coughs when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> when Go they ahead. try, when people that are very, very introverted try yeah. to be more sociable, okay, yeah, they okay. do kind of lean towards being acting a little gay because they think that being flamboyant is being, um, uh, okay, being that kind. Of, and I don't know if they if they did that on purpose or if they just. It's probably still content. Yeah. You know, I don't know. But uh, yeah. if, if they did it on purpose, I'll, I'll say kudos. <laughs> but well, I don't think they did it on purpose. Right. Huh. Yeah. No, I definitely want to check it out. It's just, I'm, I don't know. I'm kind of, I won't say scared, but. And I'm also going to say this. It was long. It was? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I'll check it out. It was long and a little bit heavy-handed and this is this is me critiquing it as mm -hmm. a academy award winner mm -hmm. movie right this is not me critiquing it as thor ragnarok right you know what i mean it's a different mm -hmm. kind of movie they went for we're gonna make this very serious we're gonna make right. this very um, mm -hmm. artsy art house right. movie right and by that standard they failed oh wow but as a general just regular movie i think mm -hmm. it was great okay good yeah, and I was was comparing it to Taxi Driver and those sort of seventies type. Uh, yeah, but Taxi Driver was um, it was a little bit more nuanced than this mm -hmm. movie. Okay. And if you're doing an art house movie that's supposed to be very, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, pardon the expression, but up your own ass, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It needs to be a little more nuanced. It needs to have a. It needs to be smarter. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Okay. And this wasn't. It was kind of. It was kind of heavy-handed and in your face okay fair enough and that's me being artsy fartsy critique -y. yeah that's fine <laughs> no I, I mean i haven't i haven't seen it so i mean i you know i'm interested in, in hearing your your point Pablo says gay <laughs> oh, uh <-huh>. all right <laughs> <clears throat> Michael says, uh, Phoenix walked right off the set of The Machinist and into an Oscar nomination. Yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much what he did. He just uh, followed uh, what's his face. Is, uh, I haven't seen The Machinist. What is that? That's the uh, that one with... The guy with the big nose? No, that's the one with... Um, pianist, right? I'm sorry? The pianist? Oh, that's a pianist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I would have loved to see him play the Joker. No, wait. I, the Machinist was... Bale, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's, Chris, it's Christian uh, Bale. Okay. Yeah, where, where he like loses like a hundred pounds and he's just a skeleton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then he went from that to Batman. Um, so um, but yeah, uh, Joaquin Phoenix did the exact same thing um in uh in the Joker. I mean, he lost a lot of weight, a ton of weight for that movie. And I will say this: in that movie, 
he shows off that he lost a bunch of weight way too much. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, they spend way too much time showing him looking skinny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like he's trying to rub it in my face because I'm fat. You know? Oh, <laughs> You could do this too if we, you were paid five million dollars. <laughs> I probably still wouldn't. Nah, <laughs> I would. It wouldn't be that hard. <laughs> I'm already skinny. Um, I just you know, there was the- something that uh, Richard C. Meyer said a long time ago. Yeah, two two years ago probably. That really pissed me off and made me feel ashamed. Why? <laughs> because he says this is what he said. He said, he said he's talking. He, he was talking about losing weight. Uh-huh. And he was like, think about it like this. Think about boot camp. Uh-huh. Right? Like military boot camp. Right. And he says, uh, you know, people go into boot camp and they come out and they're in the, the best shape of their life, right? Right. He's like, most boot camps are like what, six weeks? Uh, yeah, I think so. I was like, yeah. God damn it, he's right. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, is like you're forced to do it in mm-hmm. boot camp. You know, it's not like it's not that they give you six weeks and then you voluntarily, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm doing all this hard work and then I lose this weight. You know, you're like, you're literally forced to do all this work that makes you lose weight. So, yeah. yeah and Pablo says five million buys a lot of food. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> just think of, all, just think of all the McDonald's you can buy like afterwards. That's true. <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah, my headphones are about to go out again. Um, so I, it might be best if I just ended the stream before they go out completely. Well, let's wrap it up then. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, before so, we wrap it up, I want to let everybody know in the chat that if you want to get some of my work, some of my original artwork for dirt cheap, all you got to do is head on over to the Canadian Shield Indiegogo. In the Canadian Shield Indiegogo, there's a, a tier that says plus ash can. I'm sorry, Rick. I'm just going to show it if he wants to. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show it, show it. And it says plus ash can. I am working on an ash can called the buckler night. <coughs> Sorry. Night of descent. And uh, in there, I'll be drawing stuff like this where the, the Canadian shields like uh, ripping uh, the buckler a new one. He's, he's tearing him down. He's, uh, it's all it says very, very high T, very dark comedy. And uh, if you do that stuff, and you back at a physical tier, I'm going to be divvying out all this artwork to everybody that backs the campaign. Your name's going to go in a hat, and we're going to start pulling out names, and we're going to just start giving away artwork. We're giving away – we're we're selling the farm because we want to get this thing funded yeah. because it deserves to be funded. Yeah. And that's all hey. I got to say about that. Everybody? Yeah. Give me shield and the buckler. Rick, you want to say anything? Oh uh, well, yeah. Was, uh, the next seven people that back are getting a uh, uh, three by seven piece of original art from uh, Buckler, and uh, the next person that backs the three hundred dollar tier is getting the double page spread from the Buckler, and you, that is the Canadian Shield figurine, which is eight inches high, five inches wide, four inches deep, and I'm gonna have uh, a real one in front of me soon to show off probably in the next week. Ooh. Awesome. Very, very cool. Well, everybody, I'm going to get going now. I'm going to put the links to the Canadian Shield and the Canadian Buckler in the description after this uh, after this live stream ends. So anyone who comes by later on, please, please check it out and order it. There's uh, 26 days left to order both the Canadian Shield and the Canadian Buckler Ash Can. So check it out, and uh, you can possibly win some uh, original art from uh, from the books. Okay. So um, yeah, uh, guys, do you want to give your contact info where people can reach you? Yeah, you can find uh, me on YouTube under Dillard Draws. See you there. You can find me here on YouTube under Cross Comics and Twitter under Cross Comics as well. I'm an easy guy to find. Okay, awesome. And please subscribe to uh, to both guys on uh, Twitter and on uh, on YouTube. Um, but everybody, I want to thank you very much for hanging out with it, with me and with uh, Cross Comics and uh, John Dillard. And um, I, I will try to be back uh, fairly soon. Um, Probably tomorrow. Hopefully, yeah. I'm not sure. It just depends on how much work I have to get done with my other with my other projects. So, um, but I will see you guys soon. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. You guys take care. Okay.
Bye. Well, and thanks for having us on. My pleasure.